how does it come into play? How do you think? What, how do you think it's being received? I think everybody, uh, you know, really did a, a great job in preparation for St. Louis. Uh, I can't see, you know, people doing anything but either more precise preparation or different if they needed to make an adjustment coming out of St. Louis. So I think the cars are gonna are gonna hold up well. Um, obviously, you have challenges when you say have, for example, have an OD boxy situation yeah. where maybe you've got some really big damage to the frame yeah. and it's got to be pulled out and, or, or something along those lines or you're, you detonate your second engine and you've do, you don't have anything to, to go with. Those are going to be problematic because the turnaround is so quick. But I think so far it's uh, been a real test for people, but we've seen the guys, you know, like everything this year, adapt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and do what they need to do to, to get this done and try to get this 2020 championship um, in the history books. Yeah. Because it's definitely going to be, you know, part of history. This will be hopefully something we don't ever have to do again. Right. That's right. Yeah. I think that's great insight coming from uh, the former Jeff founder and co-host. So uh, as we get prepared here, our three judges, Chris Ewell, Brian Egger, and Ryan Lante, criticizing, critiquing, and judging. Round, top 16, round three. Michael Essa throws it in really high on the bank. Adam LZ tucking in. Just about a car length behind. Great mimicking of the angle. A little bit lower. Let's see how he handles. Dropping in from the bank, taking that title line. Adam LZ coming into that second outer zone. Good job through the power alley. Looks like dry conditions as of right now. We'll see if that holds. Michael Essa bringing into that final outside zone. The Achilles tire smoke all over the track. Both these gentlemen on Achilles radials. The official tire of the Link Engine Management Pro 2 Championship. That was a great battle. Yeah, after last year with Adam LZ, I certainly felt that he deserved to be in Pro 1. And, you know, after a shaky start in St. Louis, we're starting to see him get a bit more settled here. I mean, look at that. That's a, that's a champion that he's going up against in Michael Essa, doing a pretty good job on proximity. Comes down a little bit lower on the line, has to make an adjustment, so makes a mistake there. But Michael Essa does as well. He makes a little adjustment there, not as big. He is able to fill that second outside zone and also the third and then keep it nice and smooth here. But that gives an opportunity as Michael Essa does a great lead for Adam LZ to kind of chase him down. We know that great, great chases always come about because of quality leads. And that's where you see that little mistake there by Adam and the slight one there by Michael Essa as well. But overall, Essa had a solid lead run. It was really smooth and consistent. And this final transition here was equally smooth. It does fill the majority of that final and fourth outside zone. Yeah, I really liked Michael S's transition uh, from the second outside zone into the third of that power rally. Really snappy. Michael Essa just very smooth and, and surprisingly as smooth as he is, he's one of the fastest through the entirety of the course. So this is going to be interesting. I think he's really going to be chomping at the heels of Adam LZ. And Adam, I think, is going to be really comfortable here out front getting the fresh air. Let's see how LZ handles it. Again, it's the first ever top 16 in pro competition going against, like you said, Ryan, a former champ. LZ initiates really high on the bank. Look at Michael Essa sweating him right now, dropping in into that power alley. Now, oh man, that smoke really getting oh. Essa's face. Oh, and a massive mistake there by Michael Essa. And I think he was blinded by the smoke. Like I said, that Achilles tire smoke, some of the thickest here on track. LZ dips just barely a tread of that Achilles tire into that last outer zone, Ryan. But that was a big mistake, both of them. You know, LZ had the mistake on the inside. Now Essa really big on the outside, but some great driving to kick off top 16. Yeah, let's take a look at this again here. Really interesting battle between a former champion in Michael Essa and a rookie in Adam LZ. Here comes Essa pouring wow. on the pressure, but he gets a little bit too far inside here, and then he has to fall back, and like you said, maybe gets lost in the smoke. Here it is from another angle once again. Super close, has to angle up. There's the smoke cloud, and he goes a little bit too far, almost three tires off, loses some ground, but a wide swing right there by Adam LZ allows Michael Essa to catch back up and close the door for the remainder of the run. LZ makes a slight mistake by not getting into outside zone number four. So we saw some mistakes back and forth. And uh, this is a close one here, Jared. Both drivers with a couple of errors that the judges can point out. Does it put the direction of the judges vote in one way or the other? We will find out here shortly as Adam LZ gets his first top 16 berth against Michael Essa. Really hard to digest this one, man, because, yeah, I like the side-by-side. -side. I was going to request that myself. Side-by-side -side overhead, okay. Weird flex, but okay. As uh, the BC Racing custom coilover, instant replay. Michael right. Essa on the right in the lead. Adam LZ 
on the left. Slightly different angles here, but you'll kind of see how they both deal with the bank. As SM made that adjustment, goes way off course there. He had so much angle in his car, he still kind of kept those front two tires on, but had he had less angle, it might have been three tires off, an even bigger mistake, but it did cause him to fall back, and luckily S has got that grip. On the other side, you saw Adam LZ kind of drop down on the bank and make that big adjustment before coming into outside zone two in his chase. So is this a justifiable one more time, or do the judges have enough to go off here to point <laughs> it in the direction of Michael Essa or Adam LZ? Yeah, the, uh, I mean, I see, I see Lion, Ryan Lontane over here. Lion, Lion Lontane, is that your, is that, is that your name? Uh, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan Lontane here, uh, really just analyzing both runs, and it, it, that's a very difficult battle there to, to, to judge. They both had mistakes. Um, I think Adam LZ is gaining a lot of confidence here, going from 32 into 16. Um, and, and you know, when you when you drive against a high caliber driver, you're going to rise to the occasion. So Chris Ewell says Michael Essa. Ryan Lontane says one more time. And Brian Eggert says Michael Essa gets the win. Now, Lontane, you have your headset on, but yeah. you sided with one more time as opposed to Essa. But Essa gets the win. Yeah, so Essa did drop two tires at outside zone one. But if you look at Adam LZ's chase, he also dropped two tires just before outside zone one, uh, sorry, two. Uh, he dropped front tires, whereas Essa dropped rear tires. Mm -hmm. And um, I think what the guys are really going to put a lot of weight on is the fact that uh, Adam LZ was low on outside zone one, near the end of it especially, and he had a bit of a lift there that may have affected Michael Essa uh, pretty seriously, yeah. So that's, I'm getting uh, the wink and the gun from Chris, so I believe that, yeah, and a thumbs up from Brian. So that was the reason they went that way. And uh, yeah, so that's what it is. It seemed like a really small lift, though, and and even in top 32, I felt like we saw that from from Ryan Turk. I mean, the the, the smoke signal the smoke signal really shows you the break. Speaking of Ryan yeah. Turk, he's up next, but up next. that 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 helps. Yeah, a lot of the drivers have been struggling with that grip change from outside zone one to outside zone two, and you can still see there is a, a patch of moisture down there that we just can't get rid of today. It seems like, and I think that's what the drivers are really uh, contending with. They're trying to figure out the best way to approach that without coming in too fast, because if you do come in too fast, you end up overshooting outside zone two, dropping tires and potentially going off course there uh, in a serious way that could cause an incomplete. Yep, right on. All right, thank you for the insight. Here we go, moving on to our next battle. And, uh, you know, the videos, hype, uh, the hype building up to St. Louis, we saw Ryan say like, man, it'd be awesome one, two, we'll alternate. Well, guess what? Uh, one of these vehicles could advance on or is advancing on one of them. Their round is done here after this battle and the culmination of the two runs. So Frederick Osbo will lead behind the wheel of his Rockstar Energy Drink Toyota Racing Toyota Supra and Ryan Turk behind the wheel of uh, Freddy's uh, former vehicle. Amazing victories. Here we go. Frederick Osbo initiating Ryan Turk in the chase position. Race service boys watching from L.A. cheering on their boy Ryan Turk as Osbo. Hunter, I know you're watching from Norway, bringing it on into that outside zone, down into the power alley, transitioning into that third one. Ryan Turk, good proximity. Massive angle there from Freddy. Frederick Osbo as the Nitto tires go round into that last outside zone. Papadakis racing. It's a win-lose situation for them. Well, as lead run goes, leads run, lead runs go. That <laughs> was a, a very standard Frederick Osbo. Would have been a high 90s at least mid 90s and that gave Ryan Turk an opportunity to attack but this is a, a really solid performance from Frederick Osbo. You can just see the consistency up on the bank as Turk surges forward. It's because he's comfortable with Frederick Osbo. He knows Osbo is going to go 100%. He does miss that second outside zone Turk and trying to chase him and then shoots a little bit too long from the third. So you can see Osbo is carrying a lot of momentum. It's a great battle but back and forth. But you can see that Turk had to go a little bit in the middle lane of outside zone two. So we've, we've seen, uh, saw a couple little mistakes from Turk in the chase run. It was great proximity overall, beautiful run, very close battle. But now we're going to switch things up as Frederick Osbo will chase him down. Ryan Turk goes to the lead. Can Turk get an equal or better lead run? And then we saw the one or two little mistakes that were made by Ryan Turk that could be picked up from Frederick Osbo to try and get into the great eight. Yeah, let's see. And man, it, that, that Corolla hatchback looks so actually big and, and daunting compared to the Supra. But uh, let's see how they handle the bank. So Ryan Turk will lead coming out of the chicane, initiating. Ryan Turk 
really high out of the gate. Wow, look at Frederick Osbo just gaining some ground. These guys absolutely ripping through. Let's see how the handle coming into the power rally. Tighter line for Ryan Turk gets all the way out to that second zone. Frederick Osbo diving up, throws it right to the side of Ryan Turk. Are you kidding me? Woo! Oh, Doctor, look at this. Absolutely phenomenal chase run, but a solid lead run from Ryan Turk. Ryan Sage, how did Frederick Osbo avoid contact with, with Turk? I'm absolutely baffled. He's, wow. real, he's really that good. I think that's what it comes down to. And when you have a Papadakis racing machine that is built flawlessly on both sides of the card here with Ryan Turk and Frederick Oswald, this is what you can expect to get. Beautiful lead run here by Ryan Turk, smooth sailing through the big bank, but Osbo not letting him get away, keeping that angle and the line pretty consistent. He also gets a little bit shallow on that second and third outside zone, but I think it was better than Turk. And then right here, he gets super close to Turk without making contact. Turk pulls a beautiful line to that final outside zone, kind of bettering Frederick a little bit there. Here it is from above as Osbo Goodness. keeps the pressure on. Look at the mimicking here. This is really important as the chase driver to mimic that lead. And there, Osbo makes a slight mistake on two and three. Yeah. But it may have been better than Turk overall. But right on that inside flip, he really put the pressure on. But it cost him an outside zone four. So great back and forth. And of course, we're seeing the side-by-side -side, uh, call from the judges up here. I, I love seeing the different angles here. And yeah, Ryan Lontane and the judges are requesting, uh, you know, Brian Edgar and Chris Yule, they're all uh, requesting side-by-side -side replays. And I, I think getting that overhead view from the drone, you really saw, and it was sensational. I'm not taking anything away from Freddie, but I think that he, he compromised. And again, give and take is what I heard Lontane say, basically, you know, take away filling those zones, but give him some amazing proximity and some accolades here as we walk through the side-by-side -side here once again, Ryan. You can see Ryan Turk, you know, in the, in the lead on the right, and then uh, Freddie leading on the left. Montaigne, walk us through, what are you seeing? Well, what I saw from Freddie in his lead was that he left outside zone two pretty late and uh, got into outside zone three really late. And Frederick from the, the overhead view really overshot outside zone three. Uh, dropping a tire there and causing Ryan to do the same in the chase. And that was a big a big error from uh, from him there. He really missed two and three uh, almost entirely because of that. Uh, but he did a pretty good job everywhere else. And, you know, sometimes we get a little carried away with uh, one area of super high proximity. Osbo's proximity overall was good, but I don't know if it was um, way better than right. Ryan's overall, but he did dive in on inside clip one. So that was kind of like an exciting uh -huh. area. But um, yeah, they both made errors uh, in different areas on the track. Uh, they're both, they both had a good outside zone one. Turek did leave it um, where it ended, but he dove down closer to the yellow line there on driver's right. <sighs> so the, the BC Racing side-by-side, -side, does that uh, open up any more clarity for you? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I mean, I, I'm... You know, I'm I'm kind of leaning one way. Okay, don't yeah. Keep keep it quiet. <laughs> tell, the, tell the scores get put in. <laughs> shut, 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 shut your mouth. Shut shut, shut your mouth. As uh, as Chris. Hey, you know what? Hey, back off, bro. Back off. Here we go. Slide him left for Freddie. Right for Ryan Turk. We got one more time from Chris, and there it is. All there, right. going one more time. Yeah. And what did Brian uh, Edgar, do? it's oh, it's unanimous. One more time all around. It is unanimous. Wow, you guys actually agreed. Go figure. Yeah. That's wow. worth worth seeing it one more time though. Yeah. They, it's a high-level battle, but they both still have opportunities to improve. Um, fine. They did make errors uh, in the lead and the chase position. There was really no way to say that one driver won either position fully, and there's definitely no way to say that one driver won both positions uh, overall. So got to see that one more time. Yeah. Yeah, it looked awesome. So, all right, let's quickly throw it down to Lorette Nickel, who's with Odie. Hi, Jared. Thank you so much. Odie, we just wanted to check in, see how everything is coming together for you. Yeah, uh, it's coming together as good as I could have ever hoped. There's so many people that jumped in and helped out. Everyone at Falcon, even uh, guys from Matt Field's team. Uh, it was just really nice to get everyone to help. And literally everyone that jumped in had tools in their hand, and there was enough stuff to do for everyone that jumped in. So really uh, cool vibe out here for sure. And uh, we got the car together. We've been kind of – we had a backup plan, and we, we used it. Uh, the supercharger um, – things are so bent that I – I really can't run the supercharger right now. So we had a backup plan, a tune that runs just more nitrous, no supercharger, and it worked. So, you know, we made a few more tweaks based off of what we learned with Dean Carney, and I think 
it's up to me now. So the team did a good job. Now, now it's all in, in, uh, in my hands. Okay, Odie, thanks so much. Thank you. Guys. Thank you, Lorette, and good luck to you, Odie. Again, running, uh, running that nitrous. Put some laughing gas on it. This should be fun. These guys uh, definitely party uh, here on off track, and uh, now they're going to be partying on track. Chris Forsberg versus Matt Field. You see the stats here. Again, Nissan versus Chevy. And uh, these guys definitely have a lot of respect for each other. I, I expect uh, really some, some fun, exciting driving here. And uh, Matt would love to take down Forsberg here in, uh, in Seattle as Chris Forsberg will lead in the NOS Energy Drink. Nissan 370Z. Matt Field behind the wheel of his Falcon Tires. Drift Cave pedal commander Corvette. I'm sure uh, the fields, his mom and dad and sis are cheering him on right now. I think, I think Matt, I think, I, yeah, no, I, I think Matt, I think there's a timeout here because Matt wants to do some burpees or something like that because he's been working out a lot. I'm joking, obviously. Uh, we have uh, another banner. Just want to make sure it is secure up there, up on the bank. So uh, again, securing the banner. Yesterday we had one rock loose in during Pro 2. So uh, those things definitely get whipped so there is our formula drift staff so we'll take a quick commercial break we'll be right back as we fix up the banner and we'll continue on with the action there we are looking at ryan turk as he moves on or sorry he does not move on he <laughs> moves on to it one more time we'll be right collect them all all right here we go chris forsberg will lead matt field will give chase let's send it they have exactly the same points in the championship right oh now. that's right yeah thank you for reminding us here we go, Forsberg, across the nose of Matt Field, quickly, get into the side of Chris's car as Matt Field, high on the bank, look at this, let's see how they handle the power alley, Forsberg hanging it out to dry, coming into the power alley, quick little yank of the brake, and then Field drops right in, wrapping it right around that front clip, into that final outside, oh, it looks like Forsberg comes up short, grab another gear, Gary. That was a that thing was of a beauty big, up yeah. until that point by both drivers. Extremely well executed and so close together. Beautiful job on the Mimic here. Look at Field diving in right out of the gate, getting super close, challenging Forsberg. Chris, nice and high on the bank. Look at the front wheel above the white line. Field just a little bit lower. Now Forsberg coming down off the bank into OZ2. Hits it nice and, and deep right in that section right after the decel zone. Matt a little bit more on the middle line. Gains proximity by doing that. Just tapping that inside clip. Now let's see what happens here. Oh, there may have been some contact there. Yeah, I believe we got. On that yeah. transition, we're definitely going to want to see that. On that transition, Field was coming in super close, driving through the smoke line. Let's take a look at everything prior to that, though. Great job on the bank. Just a little bit less angle from field, and he transitions a little bit tighter. Doesn't get out to outside zone two, but keeps the pressure on. And then right here, comes through the smoke line. Looks like he looks like he taps Chris. Ooh, this is going to be a tough one for yeah, the judges. I, th I, I, think Chris, I think Chris checked up, and, uh, and he stalled. So that, uh, that would be Chris's fault, I believe. Well, they're, they're looking at uh, the vehicles now, and so because I believe that we do have contact, if any of the drivers need to have a further look, then it will uh, go to the judges for who's at fault. Now, because the run was completed and it was only resulting contact, uh, there's not going to be any incompletes given out, but it will help us uh, determine what driver uh, is allowed to hold on to their competition timeout and which one is not able to. Yeah, they, they are saying unanimously, the judges, that Chris Forsberg is at fault for the contact. Yeah, looking, looking at what we saw, uh, the again, the drone, you cannot hide anything from that drone footage. And you can see clearly that Chris, uh, on transition from inside clip one to outside zone four, you can see the car uh, lose momentum. Right as he's going towards outside zone four, and I don't know if it was a misshift, but it looked like the car ended up uh, gripping up. So that could be an indication that there was no power going to the wheels. So whether Chris missed a shift, uh, grabbed the handbrake there, which he shouldn't have, whatever it was, he's at fault because that's not a decel area. That is an area where drivers should be at the very minimum maintaining momentum. So watch Chris here. He comes by inside clip. Once he transitions, look how slow 
and he almost parks the car. Mm. And then you can yep. see Matt Field has absolutely yeah. nowhere to go. Chris doesn't even get near outside zone four. Yeah. And then they both drive pretty much straight over the finish line, uh, kind of doing a rolling burnout. So yep. that's uh, absolutely on Chris. Now, in, in terms of judging, it's basically it would be it's it's just a calculation in the overall, right? Because you, you're not really because they both straighten going over the finish line. And, and if Chris is the one that straightened because he's in the lead, he drove straight over the finish I line. See, you I know, see that's going to come down to each individual judge, yep. how strictly they're going to judge that. But in my eyes, that looked like after the after the park, Chris had lost all momentum and there was no way to keep drifting through the finish line. But he is going to, you know, he's got enough power there clearly to smoke the tires over the finish line. Show us what you're, what you're talking about yeah. on this shot here. So right here, Chris does that kind of park situation. Ooh. He then gets impacted. And then look at his front wheels now as they straighten up because there's no way he can maintain an angle. So he's pretty much burning the tires in a straight line over the finish line. So that would be an incomplete from him. Um, it could be considered an, in, in, uh, an unchaseable lead as well for parking in that situation. So the judges here have multiple uh, routes, if you will, to take in terms of giving Ryan, uh, Chris Forsberg an incomplete in that situation. Gotcha. All right, let's move on and move back, I should say, to the one more time between Osbo and Ryan Turk. So uh, Freddie Osbo and Ryan Turk, both rock star, both, to both Toyota, but only one can be a winner. And uh, really close on that first battle. Again, some, some really amazing moments, but I, I would say the compromise of, of Freddie missing the outside zones to get the proximity, we don't want that. Also, Ryan Lontane bringing up that, you know, Turk comes off of the bank uh, a little higher in this P cell. So definitely want to see uh, these guys step it up, refine it like fine wine. Here we go, Frederick Osbo, really high. Behind the wheel, got Rockstar Energy Drink, Toyota GR Supra. There you go, good proximity, filling that outside zone. There goes Freddie. Now Ryan Turk does the same on that third. Really close, good chase shot, but Ryan Turk does miss that front clip. Now let's see. Uh -oh. oh, boy, Ryan Turk transitioning and really, oh, man, I want to look at that again. I was looking at the screen, and it didn't have the exact shot. It was getting shot. real smoky that for a second, too. sketch ball. All right, let's take a look at it again. We'll take a different look here, Ryan. Well, this is certainly a different start than the first battle. Let's take a look as Osbo initiates. Here comes Turk once again. You can see he's starting to reel in Freddie, but a little bit less angle. And then Freddie comes off the right time on OZ1. Getting into OZ2, here he goes. Yeah. Deep this time, Turk follows him out, does a much better job, but he's gonna swing a little bit wide here and miss that inside clip, as you said, Jared. And then right here, it looks like he was coming up super fast on the back bumper of Osbo and then pushes out a bit too wide and actually goes almost completely off course. Yeah. Not a good line. And it seemed that it was almost, it was reminiscent of, of me, or it was reminiscent of St. Louis for me, you know, where you saw Chelsea Nova really take that wide line and then tighten it up. And, uh, and, and it seemed like Turk took that wide line and stayed wide, didn't tighten up to the front clip, which threw him off when he transitioned over. It just beelined towards that wall, so he kept it off the wall. So definitely, uh, definitely interesting line there. And just looking at the, the standings right now, Frederick Osbo, 32 points behind Ryan Turk. He's sitting in fourth place. So it just shows you uh, how big of a battle this is. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Ryan Turk. Shout out. He's McFarland tuned in. Let's send it. Here we go. Ryan Turk initiated. He's out front. Frederick Osbo giving that chase. All Toyota, all Rockstar. Who's going to be the highest Rockstar here? Moving on as Ryan Turk brings it on into that second outside zone, transitioning now. Ryan Turk really needs to show up. He went off course, tightens it up to the front clip, as does Freddie. Now, like I said, Freddie did have that good proximity on the first battle, but he is still in the zone. Fails to get to that final outside zone, but definitely very exciting here. Oh, wow. The left wheel was, oh, wow. I didn't even see that. Oh, wow. Oh, there we go. The judges were saying that the Osbo's left rear wheel was broken the whole time. Now, we won't see it from the drone here, but this will give you an idea of just how close Osbo was attacking on the big bank. Backs off for a second as Turk clears outer zone two and three, does an incredible job there. And then through the inside clip, this is where we saw Turk fall off in his run. Turk this time around hits that outside zone. Osbo's on a slightly tighter line. But obviously, we're going to be looking at the totality of these two runs uh, and, the mis and the mistake that Turk made. Did Oswell make something similar in his chase? I'm not seeing it so far. But let's see if we can see the left rear of what the judges were pointing out. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't. Look at that thing rocking around. 
Oh, wow. Holy yeah, look cow. at that. That is crazy. How he held that together is unbelievable. That's why you guys are judges. You pick that up. <laughs> <laughs> We're just like, wow, look at the smoke. No, I'm kidding. So, <laughs> yeah. Just I don't, can't see it with the black wheels. You, you can't really see it, but if we... If you, there's that one little shot the there car. where you could actually see it kind of bending outwards. Yeah. And it was certainly ratcheting around. The fact that he made it through that run was pretty incredible yeah. if, if that's truly what happened. Yeah, he had, he had, you could see it cambered out. You could see the attitude of the vehicle, especially going to that final outer zone. The attitude of the car is rocking and rolling. So here we go. Do we have a winner? Slide him left for Osbo, right for Ryan Turk. And it looks like Freddy Osbo, the Norwegian hammer, gets the victory unanimously and will move on to the great eight. A great effort. Round of applause for Ryan Turk. Uh, you know, getting second and third last weekend. Frederick Osbo, or not last weekend, but last round of one and two. And then Frederick Osbo getting the victory at round one, the inaugural round four, the 2020 season. But uh, man, unbelievable battle there between the Rockstar Energy drink Toyota racing vehicles, but Frederick Osbo advances on. Ryan Turk will be back tomorrow for round four. So the consequential battles continue to yeah. stack up here, and here's the second half of the Matt Field and Chris Forsberg battle. Obviously, we heard from Ryan Lantain. We also were confirming or did confirm that the other two judges gave fault to Chris on that final uh, approach to outside zone number four. So the second half of this battle here certainly going to play a big role in who moves on into the great eight, but it does look like it's leaning in the favor of Matt Field, at least at the present moment. Celebrating 17 years of Formula Drift this year. I was just thinking, man, 20 years and three, that's crazy. Three years, 2023. 20, uh, just thinking about all the, all the memories and all the tires burnt here at Evergreen Speedway. Let's alternate the order. Matt Field will lead. Chris Forsberg giving chase the second half of this battle. Like you said, Ryan, Forsberg at fault. You wonder what went wrong. Did he fix it? Can he fight back? Who's moving on to go against Frederick Osbo? Field initiates really hard into that bank. Nice job by Matt Field pulling away that supercharged Corvette. Now see how he handles the power. Oh, look at this. Looks like Matt Field, what happened there? Do we have contact with the wall? Let's take a look at that again. But Forsberg gets thrown off. Forsberg might have gotten a little bit of a gift there. But I'll tell you what, Forsberg has had tons of contact today. Between, you know, earlier we saw him go against Tyler Nelson. He hit him. He hit the wall. Here we go. You know, Field gets into the other side of this thing. I mean, man, is it going to be around to, to do battle tomorrow? The immediate question is going to be whether or not the contact from Field to the wall had anything to do with Chris Forsberg going off course. That is going to be the question that the judges are going to want to answer here. Here's Field making contact with the wall. We got it from the first angle. Here's the second. You see it more deliberately there. And then that little check up there. So <laughs> this just keeps getting more interesting. <laughs> so we have, a, a chuckle, right? we have an error from Chris that was decidedly so unanimous by the judges. Now we've got an error in the lead by Matt Field and the the open question, and let's bring Ryan in here, at least at first pass, are you seeing anything there that affected Chris going off course by what Matt Field did? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you can yeah, see. That is yeah. clear right there. Yeah, you can see Field lifting because he knows he's getting to the wall, and then once he taps the wall, the front end goes uh, into a bit of a, an understeer situation. The car straightens up, uh, and, and then he gets back to angle. But in that case, Forsberg is still coming in at full tilt behind him, trying to maintain proximity. So you can see uh, Field, uh, yep. The field actually over kind of angles the car there in anticipation of that hit and he also lifts and that's a, a pretty big decel at the end of outside zone one and uh, Forsberg clearly has nowhere to go in that situation and instead of making contact with field he uh, he chooses to avoid the hit and spins and going off course so, so is this on, from your side is this a classic one more time scenario where you have incompletes in the lead or is there something else that we should be thinking about no in this situation you've got two lead runs that were impeded by the other driver right so the lead driver the lead driver ended up doing something that uh, didn't allow the chase driver to complete the run and i don't think there's much of another alternative here than yeah. than one more time unfortunately for matt field who like you said was kind of uh given that yeah, he was big, gifted. You know, yeah, an, an opportunity. Uh, and then he unfortunately tapped the wall there and made a big error.
by the way, shout out to the drone driver, man. <laughs> like the drone pilot, excuse me, some not only artsy fartsy cool shots, but also becoming becoming the fourth judge, man. That's yeah. you, you cannot lie. Uh, yeah, here we go. So slide them uh, left for Forsberg, right for Field, but I think we know the outcome. OMT one more time. Man, a lot of one more times wow. here. And I think I think that's a sign of seeing the track in its ideal conditions and drivers pushing and going for it. You know, between between Turk and Osbo. And uh, yeah, I mean the judges, you know, it, it's 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 a tough decision, man. Do not envy these judges. That one, I I, I don't think is a, as tough because it's just a it's just a matter of you know yeah. following the the uh, the inferences, right? You have two incompletes in yep. the in the lead. That's a one more time, right? Yeah. The pro the the problem is is that you know field kind of gave it to him. Yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, as we wrap up that battle or not wrap it up but clarify one more time Lorette Nickel is with the former champ and winner of round one Freddie Osbo Jared thank you so much so your team just told you that you pulled a thread uh, the judges noticed that your back left wheel was wobbling what was going on yeah good question um, first and foremost badass battles with Ryan mad respect for the guy uh, and this is obviously some cannibalism going on in Papadakis racing right now, us going against each other, Ryan and Jonathan earlier, and two super clean battles. We ended up taking the win, but that, but not before we did the one more time but battle. And I felt coming into the second corner in the first run that something was off in the right rear. Didn't tell the guys, but did the second run, came into the, the, the corner again, and I was like, holy crap. The, the whole right rear assembly was loose. And I think what it is, is that at the end of the track here, there's a little bit of a jump. And back in 2011, I loved to jump that place. We actually have some photos of the car uh, with all four in the air. And I've been jumping again today, and I probably broke something back there. The boys are on it. We'll get it ready and ready for top eight. Okay, Freddie. Thank you. Guys. All right, thank you, Lorette. Yeah, uh, stay off the jump, bro. They're not, uh, they're not rally cars, so... Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure Stefan's like, stay off the jump. All right, here we go. Moving on to our next battle. Daijiro Yoshihara, former champ, going against Chelsea Denofa. As, uh, Ready to rowdy. You can see the gold nose there on the left. He will be chasing down, and that will be in the rear view mirror of Daijiro Yoshihara. Two very different driving styles. Uh, you know, Daijiro Yoshihara, very soft spoken, very smooth driver, a lot of horsepower, uh, but just but very smooth. Chelsea Denofa, just violent, just turns it up, gets in, comes in hard. You can see a very, again, just two very different styles, two different vehicles. Here we go. Dai Yoshihara into the bank, transitions in. Chelsea Denofa in the chase position. Whoa, look at that, reeling him in. And Dai Yoshihara with massive angle. See how they come into the power alley in that second outside zone. Both of them filling it up. Chelsea Denofa lunging towards the BRZ. You can see that gold nose just blending in with the gold wheels of Dai Oshihara. And there it is. Wow. Denofa making a very strong case for, <laughs> for his chase run there. <laughs> but obviously that can't be done without a really good lead run. And Dai got a great jump there, was nice and high on the bank. And as we take a look at it, he's known for his silky smooth style. He gives a nice entry point here to Denofa, who takes advantage of it. But you can see Dai is right on that white line, that upper white line. So he's pretty much almost at the highest point of the bank. But Denofa is using that to keep proximity on Dai. Dai fills both zones. Denofa sticks on the line pretty well there through inside clip one. And in the final transition here, goes about as equally as deep as Dai. So we see a lot of guys cutting that line to try to gain proximity. Denofa opts to stay on the correct line with the lead driver. He just had a little surge there on, on the bank that dropped him down a little bit. Let's see how he does outside zone two. Okay, so he goes a little bit shallow on outside zone two relative to Dai, but he comes back for three pretty solid. Inside clip one is nice, good transition back around, and the mimicking there is uh, pretty spectacular as well. Yeah. So great job by both drivers and a good battle here in the top 16. All right, now Chelsea Denofa getting the clean air through the gold nostrils of that signature RTR grill. And Dai Oshihara would love to apply the pressure here, knocking out Chelsea Denofa, the winner, advancing on into the great eight. Here we go. Eight start. No strikes. Rolling coal there, Chelsea Denofa. And Dai Oshihara, look at that. You can see great proximity. Man, Chelsea is flying through the bank. Massive contact there. Wow. Actually, not as bad as I thought on first glance. That looked pretty bad, but Dai Oshihara stays into it. That could have gone really south really quick. 
as Chelsea powers on through. I think it was directly wheel to wheel. Yeah, it, it, yeah. you saw Dai Oshihara. It looked like his bumper just bounced up and then bounced back. Let's take a look at it again. Definitely want to get the drone shot here with the BC Racing uh, instant replay. Well, here we go. As Dai approaches, he is reeling in Denofa here, getting super close, and then right there. Wow, yeah, wheel to wheel. Ooh. And Denova, keep, he, it's the second time he's been hit today. This angle right here is going to really give us a lot more fine-grained detail. Oh, yeah, wow. he just rolls right on the tire. So kind of avoiding maybe some big structural damage. but And it's amazing that Dai was able to get back in it. So obviously, we know what has to happen here. The judges are going to sit down and determine fault. Was Denova, oh, there might have been a little lift there from Denova. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll get a drone shot here momentarily. You know, we are telling these chase drivers, be as close as you possibly can. And a lot more attention is being put on the lead drivers in terms of their responsibilities and what they're supposed to be doing. So the judges are asking for the drone replay, of course. They want to see if there is any kind of lift or, or any slowdown. All right, so uh, as Let's take a look here. You can see these cars definitely doing some battle. Man, between the center line wheels of Chelsea Denofa and the Titan 7 on Dai Oshihara, those wheels took a licking and kept on turning. So that was absolutely awesome. Great battle here. And shout out, shout out Cletus Lantana, What's up, homeboy? Walk us through this. What do you see here? Oh, this is a tough one, guys. Looking at the end of outside zone one, it's not an area to be lifting, and we know that some drivers have been doing it, and they may have been getting away with it. Oh. But yeah, you're talking about the smoke, the smoke dissipation there from Denofa. Well, that's what we're trying to see, and um, that's where our uh, beautiful drone would have come in uh, handy. But that was a pretty big hit, and it didn't look like Dai was diving in. It didn't look like Dai was um, in any way accelerating aggressively. He was maintaining pace. And he was keeping up with uh, with Chelsea at that point. So the only logical explanation for that is that, uh, you know, Chelsea did have a slowdown in that area because of the fact that Dai was doing what he was supposed to in the chase. You can see here that the line that uh, Dai is, is, is following is very similar to what Chelsea's doing. He's not, you can actually see he's right on the same line, actually. Yeah. Call attention to what you're looking at specifically on Denofa's car. So. What we're going to look at is the rear wheels. You saw a little bit of a lockup, but unfortunately the back wheel just went out of frame right there. But initially you could see Chelsea's back wheel lock up a little bit. So that indicates maybe a handbrake pull. Um, I don't think it would be a foot brake. Uh, that wouldn't be able to lock up like that. So that's probably what we're going to have to look at with different views uh, that we can get with the, uh, the replay cameras that we have in place. Yeah, really aggressive battles, and this is what we've come to expect, especially here in Seattle. So some awesome, some awesome battles, you know, forcing some one more times, you know, between Osbo and Turk, and now Forsberg and Field, and uh, now we are waiting for the verdict between Dai and Denofa, and the judges really deliberating on this one, Ryan. But yeah, you, it's, it's going to come are, down. Are you it's leaning either way? Well, I'm sympathetic to what Ryan said. And obviously, you know, it's really important, especially when a chase driver is in proximity, that a lead driver be continuing with the momentum that they're setting, except if they're going in, they are in a decel area. That's right. why those things have been designated. And that's why the responsibility of the lead. So I'm sympathetic to what he's talking about, whether or not the other two judges are going to agree. We're going to find out as soon as those res results go up, because obviously it's going to turn on um, on that uh, incident that took place. So uh, we are waiting for. And uh, so uh, we are waiting for the judge's verdict. Drivers patiently waiting again, just analyzing that. And this, and this bank has really come into play, especially with drier conditions. You know, with like the wet, everybody's kind of tiptoeing. But uh, looks like we have a result. Slide them left for Dai Yoshihara and Chelsea Denofa. And there you go. Dai Yoshihara gets the win. 
Daijiro Yoshihara gets the win unanimously. Lantane, I saw you go over there and wrap out with the other judges. Mike on there for Ryan Lantane. Make sure that we can wrap out, Ryan. Nope. <laughs> All right, so uh, again, wrapping out with Ryan Lantane. And uh, yep, there we go, Ryan. All right, guys, I was looking, uh, I was talking with the other judges about where the D cell zones are on the map and looking at exactly what happened with Chelsea in the lead. And in this situation, I know other drivers have also uh, decelled a little bit there. They may have gotten away with it because the chase driver wasn't doing what they were supposed to. But in this situation, Dai Yoshihara was on the exact line that Chelsea Denofa was running in the lead position. Uh, Dai Yoshihara was not cheating whatsoever. He was mimicking his line, his angle, his speed. Everything was perfect on Dai's side. And he got uh, totally um, slowed down on in, in the chase position by Chelsea. So in that position, Dai had absolutely zero place to go. In other situations, and I know people are going to say this, but in other situations, the chase drivers were not on the ideal line. They right. were lower, and there was a, a situation there that did not match what just happened here. But of course, they both did an awesome job. Um, Dai had a killer lead run. He was on his marks everywhere. His chase was, was lining up to be phenomenal as well. I don't think I've seen a chase driver follow on the exact same line like that all yeah. the way around outside zone one without cheating the line or angle. So that was phenomenal from Dai, and that's what we're looking for in the chase position. Just unfortunate that uh, Chelsea did a slow down up there and not down a little bit lower uh, where the decel zone is on the map. Yeah, and I appreciate you elaborating in, into great length, and I think that'll let everybody, uh, the fans and even the spotters and everybody else, really understand what the judges are looking for. And, and again, Ryan Lontane speaking on behalf of, uh, of, of Chris and Brian. So here we go, moving on to our next battle. We'll go back to it one more time in a moment, but right now it's all about uh, Masuyama versus Pollen here in the Royal Purple Top 16. Wataru Masuyama from Japan behind the wheel of his S15, Justin Pollock, getting here as uh, he went one more time against Rome Charpentier. A great battle there. And here comes GT See how they handle it. JTP quickly separating himself from Masuyama. And Masuyama not even on the same playing field right now. Can to catch up as uh, Masuyama Driving his own line, JTP feeling all of the outside zones. Well executed, big angle there. And there's the signature, Pollock flick. And they cross the finish line, Ryan. Yeah, Masuyama not much of a factor there in the chase. Justin Pollock got uh, a really good jump out of the gate and really didn't look back. So Masuyama's got his work cut out for him here. He's gonna have to come back with a strong lead. But we, we've noticed that Justin has been really strong in his chase run. So you have to imagine he's not gonna let Masuyama get away. But here's that big gap. And we're talking about six, seven, maybe nine, almost 10 car lengths by the time we get to three quarters of the bank. And then he still is going deep into second and third outside zone. So he's not running away. He's doing the right thing that the judges are looking for. I think the simple fact is here is that Masuyama just did not get the appropriate jump out of the gate and didn't have the grip to catch up to Justin Pollock. Now let's alternate the order here. Masuyama and Pollock. Waturu Masuyama will lead FD Rookie. And Pollock. Pollock will be chasing him down. Uh, I think Pollock has a major advantage here, but going against Masuyama for the first time, this could be interesting. And it looks like we are clear to send. All right, we got a clean start. Make sure they make it past the cone, and yes, they do. down the track. Now let's see, oh, Pollock sweat Masuyama in that second outer zone. All signs are saying Justin Pollock. One more outside zone for Justin Pollock and a great execution there by Masuyama, but I think the first portion of that battle, Ryan, is gonna be the key indicator. 
Yeah, the first uh, the first half, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, that, that gap is really hard to overcome because if you're not a factor in the chase, it's really hard to, to put that into the, the calculus of winning in a, a, a round, especially against a driver like Justin Pollock, who's going to do this to you here and not let you get away, even though he knows that he's got a big advantage from his lead run. Masayama, great heart, putting it all together here, but unfortunately just too little too late because of that first run. Let's take a look at it overhead. Pollock kind of pacing out with him here. Masayama gets a nice early initiation. Beautiful job there. Super high on the bank. You can see his right front wheel right on that top white line. And uh, as a lead driver is really giving Justin a great opportunity to attack. And this is what you wanted to see from Masayama in his chase run to give us a more competitive battle. But unfortunately just was not there. And while the lead run was solid, you got to have that chase run to back it up. All right, we got the overhead view. The drone is back. And I believe this is going to be. All right, slide him left for Masuyama or right for JTP. It looks like Justin Pollock gets the victory. JTP gets the win. Again, the first half of that battle. Uh, definitely uh, Masuyama needs to keep that proximity, needs to keep it all the way through. But uh, hats off to Masayama for making his first top 16 here this season. And excited to see him tomorrow back here for round four. We're going back to the battle between Forsberg and Field. The one more time battle. Forsberg already on the line, Ryan. Yeah, this is a, uh, I would say, best way to describe it is kind of a fresh start for both guys, yeah. right? Obviously, we saw Two mistakes, uh, significant mistakes by both Matt Field and Chris Forsberg. I think Field really had it going for him uh, in that last battle, but uh, hit the wall and caused uh, the the incomplete from Chris. And you know we know that these guys are professional drivers; they can learn from those mistakes and come back and give us even a better battle to entertain us here. So. We're in for a treat the second time around, Matt Field and Chris Forsberg. I'm interested to hear what kind of gremlin Forsberg had going into that final outside zone because uh, that was very un, un Forsberg esque. And then uh, I, we know Field, you know, he's going to push hard. And I think he just pushed too hard on the on his lead run. So, like you said, uh, both of them kind of received a gift. I would say Forsberg got the biggest gift. So, uh, little uh, little course maintenance here as uh, again, little Air Force trivia underneath. The, uh, you could go to the description on the YouTube live stream page and uh, aim high, Air Force trivia. What is the oldest aircraft the Air Force still uses? The C-130 Hercules, B-52, Stratofortress, F-16 Fighting Falcon, or the T-37 Tweet. So go to the description in the YouTube live stream page and answer the question. You guys know the answer? Ryan, did, did you write this question as well, bud? No, I don't ever write them, but uh, I do know the answers to them. Okay, got it. Because I, I, I fill out the form. Which Okay. Do you yep. know which one it is? Yeah, Kemp was correct. Okay. All right, good. There you go. All right. So a tin roof rusted, right? Is that uh, Love Shack? As we, uh, we move on to the one more time battle, Forsberg and Field. And, uh, man, <laughs> Ryan, these, these poor guys, we're doing some track maintenance right now, but last time these guys got iced as well, so we had to back them up. So I'm sure, I'm sure they'll... They're getting iced once again. We have, uh, again, issues with these banners. Just here with the with the moisture, the, the banners are attached by wood and those fasteners, and, and the banners just get absolutely rocked when the drivers are going past them. So it looks like we are clear to send. So, you know, with with these drivers, you know, going through their minds, all those banners right there are attached to, uh, to wood, and then the wood rots out. So here we go. We are clear to send. Let's send it, fellas. Forsberg out front field in the chase position. But one more time battle. Forsberg initiates. High on the bank. You can see those banners being blown around. Oh, and Forsberg with a massive correction reinitiates. Some issues happening between Forsberg. Looks like he dips out, saves his car. Put the hand out the window. Yeah, he's just saying, I'm out. Oh, man, that could have been really hairy. Wondering what's going on there. Yeah, I believe uh, we are hearing that. He just called competition timeout. And, he, and here's the issue right now. Is, uh, is is Chris, you know, obviously with the deficit, I think he's got to get this figured out before tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, this goes, now the, the pendulum is swinging back into Matt oh, Field. And I think, you know, you're not going to pass this by Matt Field two times in a row. 
But obviously, yeah, there it is, the five Bad. out to uh, race control, which is uh, right next to us. So you can see from initiation, the car is just not look settled. Looks like he's fighting it, and then he just kind of gives it up. And uh, Matt Field can shut it down there. He kind of knows what he needs to do there. He saw Chris go off the course, calling the competition timeout. And so Chris Forsberg will be sitting with an incomplete from his lead run. And Matt Field will now have a pretty sizable opportunity and advantage here as he goes to the lead on the second half of the battle, assuming that Chris does get back to the line. All right, so competition timeout is called. And uh, not the spotter doesn't know what's going on here. All right. Uh, well, we move out with competition. We'll take a short break here. Uh, again, we'll be right back with top 16. Again, and you can see he is still suited and booted. What is going on with Forsberg and his vehicle? As uh, you can see, it's it's definitely taking a beating. Not a not a straight panel on it from the right side. We got the field damage, the front left, back right. Tyler Nelson. So, uh, Lorette, what can you tell us about what's going on? Guys, well, I heard Chris and Jimmy talking, and I heard something about a misfire, possible misfire. They're not totally sure. The five-minute clock is running. We're at 3.12 right now. Uh, they're checking Chris still outside of his car, talking with Jimmy. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to see what they have their hands on uh, right now. So there isn't a lot of scrambling around the car. There's a lot of calm movements, but uh, Jimmy and Chris both talking about what the possible problem could be. We're at two minutes and 49 seconds. And again, Chris Forsberg just checking everything out. And let me see, let me grab Kevin Wells and see if Kevin has any information because since the guys are moving around the car, I don't want to get in the way. Hey, Kevin, do you know what the problem is? Um, basically, when it was on the bank, it just lost power and basically went flat. That's why it was making a whole bunch of noise. So they're just trying to diagnose and see what it is. But right now, they don't really know what's happening. So just looking for problems. Okay. Thank you so much. Now, I'm not sure if they're able to solve it right now uh, with almost two minutes, 2.05 left. Uh, the hood is starting to go back on. Um, Chris getting back in the car. So they don't seem to have found the problem, but you know, Chris is a fighter and he's going back to war. Guys. Yeah, we're, we're up here rapping out about it and you've seen a lot of, you know, the universal, like, I don't know, like that, that dude, that emoji that has the kind of hands up in the air, that's what I'm seeing. And I, you know, we're asking each other up here, Lorette, if, if do you risk it? Do you go out there and, right. and, you know, potentially throw it into the wall? Yeah. Or do you remedy it and come back stronger, forfeit and come back stronger tomorrow? I mean, maybe, you know, you can go out into the burnout box and, you know, give it a whip around and then make a, a judgment in the moment whether you go through with it or not. But, um, yeah, that's a, certainly part of the, I guess, decision that needs to be made because we still have a hold around tomorrow, as you said. Yeah. All right. Uh, looks like. So, uh, yeah, it looks like they, they obviously will make the NGK competition timeout, five-minute allotment. But uh, the problem is, uh, again, does he risk it? Here we go. Set up the next heat here. Vaughn Gittin Jr. versus Odie Bakshi. Speaking of uh, unfortunate turn of events, Odie Bakshi's talking about taking the supercharger off, being N.A., throwing some more nitrous at it. And you could obviously see, I don't see a belt on there, so I believe, yeah, he's, he's going N.A. with a lot of spray. Well, I mean, it gives you an idea of the sophistication of the team to be able to make that kind of adjustment, right? To go yeah. from, he said, setup A to setup B. And who knows how it's going to perform, but obviously it's different than they intended. Here we go. Fonkin Jr. will lead that Monster Energy Nitto Tire Ford Performance Mustang RTR. Ready to rock. Bocci is our current points leader. Can he hold on to that lead? Initiated into the bank goes Fonkin Jr. No goggles necessary. It's not wet. You can see smoke is being created. Now coming down to the power alley, Odi Bocci seems to be hanging on. Yeah, a lot of handbrake pulls as I'm hearing Ryan Lontane elaborate on this as Vaughn Gitt Jr. comes into that last outside zone. And hey, not too shabby for Odie Bakshi, who's definitely 
Uh, taking a couple hits. Not too shabby, but I, I think, honestly, he's probably at 85%. Yeah, right. Right? I mean, he would have been door-to-door -door on the big bank there and reeling in Vaughn just from what we've seen in the past. But Vaughn is putting down an incredible lead run. You can see Odie is on a shallower line, shallower angle. He has to kind of do that in order to stay in some relative distance to Vaughn Gittin Jr. But Vaughn is, is really doing almost everything you could possibly want from the lead driver out front to give Odie an opportunity to chase. He's throttling through uh, outside zone two and three, deselling in the right area, back on throttle through this inside clip. Odie is keeping pretty good proximity here, but you can tell he's fighting yeah. for this. He really wants to get close, uh, but obviously the car is not 100% clearly, both aesthetically and from what he reported to us during the break. So I think Vaughn's got a, an advantage here, but you know Odie could pull this one off if he's able to put down a good lead and force some airs on Vaughn Gittin Jr. in the chase. Yeah, I'm, I'm really interested to see how Odie goes out front and uh, and how, how he gets down. And, and you're right, Ryan, just going, you know, judging Odie versus Odie in previous, you know, St. Louis and even into last year, the Odie's chase runs have just become some of the best. I mean, I would say him and Osbo uh, percentage-wise just seem to have just the, the closest proximity and consistency in the chase position. I mean, not taking away anything from other drivers, but, I, you know, between Osbo and Odie, they, they always seem to just rise to the occasion. But uh, right now, here we go. Odie out front, Vaughn Gittin Jr. This might be a good opportunity for Vaughn to seize the moment and attack as there we go. See Look at difference. that. And there, that's exactly what I would assume he was uh -oh. going to do. Careful. Woo! Vaughn Gittin Jr. dancing with the devil, the devil being Odie as we bring it into the power alley, exiting out. And Odie Bashi's keeping it consistent, filling those outside zones. But Vaughn Gittin Jr. right there, <laughs> shoving that chrome nose right next to, to Odie Bakshi's unbelievable. Well, that that's Woo. pretty typical Vaughn Gittin Jr., classic Vaughn Gittin Jr. that we've that we've known from many, many years of drifting, putting the pressure on as the chase driver against right now the series leader. This is a huge battle for championship implications. And with his teammate Chelsea Denofa going out, Vaughn trying to make up some ground in the championship himself. He's currently sitting right now at 13th place. This is a huge opportunity for him to capture some much needed points in round three. And he may have been doing just that right here, especially towards the end, really putting the pressure on. So the bank was a great job in maxing or mimicking the line and angle and keeping that pressure on. And the duration of proximity here was also pretty consistent. And the judges will certainly lean towards that. If they have to pick duration over surging and backing off, they will take duration all day long. And so Vaughn did a pretty quality job there in the chase position. Yeah, that was that was absolutely impressive. And that's uh, that that's exactly what I thought Vaughn Gittin Jr. was gonna do. But look, I mean, you oh, that was a great shot. Did you see that overhead? Odie boxes his car, it was he was crab walking. Here we go, slide him left for Vaughn. Gittin Jr. gets the win, knocking out our points leader. Ryan, points being shaken up here. Quite a bit because, I mean, look, Ryan Turk went out. Odie Bakshis went out. Uh, the other question is, oh, Denofa went out, right? Because, I mean, they were up in the mix. The, and, top, uh, the top three guys are out yeah. in the same bracket. Yeah. Is that right? All, all in the top in the, 16? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in the same bracket. All in the top 16. So equal points for them. So they are going to be uh, pretty tight. The three of them, Osbo, Field. Yep. And... There Let's you go. see who else we got. And Michael Essa in the top, in the, and Dylan Hughes, Justin Pollock in the top 10 remain. Yep. Yeah. So things are going to get shaken up here. I like it. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it as Vaughn Gittin Jr. moves on. He will be going against either Toguchi, Kazuya Toguchi, or Dylan Hughes. You can see it over there. And then uh, we still have yet to decide the Forsberg field. We'll see if, uh, if he's 100%. But right now he is on a massive deficit. See if the car is up to snuff, but I, I, I have a feeling they're going to be tearing that thing down tonight. Jimmy, Chris, Darren, Danny, they're going to be thrashing into that thing and trying to find the gremlin and don't feed them after midnight, don't get them wet. I'm thinking if you're field spotter here, you know, you, you want to go 99.9%. Okay, tell, tell Matt Field to go 99%. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever, I don't, have you met Matt Field? <laughs> He is a he's just a just a gregarious, awesome dude. He has a good time, and is a, is is definitely outspoken, but in a good way. Love his spirit. Really excited, and he's just a, a great part of the Formula Drift DNA. 
All right. These guys, uh, I know they want to have a, a good battle, good throwdown, and unfortunately, it was compromised due to the gremlin under the hood of Chris Forsberg, but right now, Matt Field's going to throw it down. What do you got? The beast from the bay. Matt Field throwing it down. There goes Matt Field. Big angle there from him. Really high at the bank. Looks like uh, Forsberg has solved the problem. Is now coming down into that second outside zone. Forsberg lunges forward. Looks like he made a small correction there. Top of my some angle, get that proximity. That's not going to be enough to offset that incomplete there, Ryan. Unfortunately for Chris, he did put together a decent chase run, but field flawless lead run, put the car in the right places, great angle, exciting, all of the you know all of the things, and then unfortunately Chris making that big mistake and losing power on the on the first battle. Yeah, that's going to be too big of a hill to climb here. This will go in the direction of Matt Field. Able to put down a solid lead run. We saw Forsberg surging and keeping proximity, especially down into the power alley here. Not sure if the car is at 100% and whether or not they got a fix on. You can see he made a slight little mistake there. Did a great job keeping angle and proximity with Field right there on inside clip one. So putting together a heroic effort, but Field too strong here, no mistakes. And with the mistake by Chris in the first run, it is going to go in the direction of Matt Field. And here we go, Forsberg and Field. Slide them left for Forsberg or right for Matt Field. And feeling the wave, the heat wave as he moves on, surfing his way into the great eight. Matt Field will be going against Freddy. Freddy, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's as Frederick Osbo versus Field. Hull versus Essa, Dai versus JTP, and Vaughn Gittin Jr. against Ryan. He's going against you. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. I'll get ready. Yeah, yeah get ready, bro. I no, see. I was just going to say Field and Osbo, they meet again. Where did, uh, oh, yeah, that's right, in St. Louis, the most recently. And yeah, there were some shots fired, dude. You, you saw uh, you saw Field just blap them. Had to jog your memory on that one. Yeah, huh? thanks. I mean, my, my mind's like an Etch-a-Sketch, dude. I draw the pictures and just shake it around and then. Yeah, I won't even, tomorrow I won't remember what we did today. The joke you made about that yesterday is still my all-time favorite, <laughs> but you don't have to call it <laughs> You don't now. have to call it <laughs> it's, it's, it's just for us, it's just for us right here, right in between the plexi. All right, here we go, our final battle of the Royal Purple Top 16. Speaking of Royal Purple, we got Dylan Hughes flying the fast orange and the Permatex livery here this weekend. He's going against Kazuya Taguchi in that Up Garage GT Radial S15. Shout out to the East 10 Drift fellas. Rocking the uh, AZ Rags graphic. Shout out to those boys. And we are clear to send our final battle, the top 16 and the Royal Purple top 16, I might add. And let's see what we get from Kazuya Taguchi out front. Dylan Hughes in the chase position. All right, coming out of the chute, Taguchi. Turns it up with that VR power, S15. Dylan Hughes with a 2J Beamer. Oh, Dylan Hughes reeling him in. A little low here, let's see how Taguchi comes into the power alley. Nice job as the GT radials go around, transitioning into that third outside zone. Look at Dylan Hughes chomping at the bit, throwing it in, nosing in, pushing that bumper out of the way. Maybe some contact was made there. Let's take a look at that again. Hopefully we got that drone side. Don't, don't see the drone in the sky, but hopefully we did. There is definitely some contact, yeah. no question, on inside clip one. Good battle there. Good back and forth between these guys. Taguchi out front, nice and high on the bank. Here comes Hughes trying to reel him in. Slightly lower line dipping down for just a second, but keeping that relative closeness there, surging as Taguchi Gets through that decel area, then right into outside zone two. Hughes misses it and also comes off outside zone three early. This is where the contact was made right there, and then that's where the bumper gets ripped off. It gets in front of Hughes. Luckily, it doesn't go under or get stuck in the wheels, but he did fall back there. So it was an aggressive uh, tactic by Hughes that led to a little bit of a mistake that he's going to want to correct. I do see him from the drone moving back away from the hot pit, so I have to imagine this is going to be an automatic competition timeout. Yeah, we're checking. I mean, you know, the I've, 
I like the term ravenous racing. I think that uh, that was incidental contact, and I think you know you would have to call a comp timeout if you want to get your hands on the car. So I mean, we're we're into the top 16. It would be a good time to utilize it for either of the drivers. But seems that Dylan is is rolling here. I saw his spotter, his dad up here, but. Uh, Yeah, he's kind of deciding for us. He's obviously going back to his pit because he wants to get hands on car. So they will assign him a competition timeout. Um, if this was due to contact, then I, I guess the judges would have to determine fault. But uh, let's go talk to Lorette real quick yeah. with Matt Field. All right. Well, Matt Field is having a snack in between all of his battles. And Matt, uh, a lot of stuff just happened between you and Chris Forsberg. Now your team working on the car. Is something broken? Uh, no, we're just going over everything. And because I put it in the wall on the first battle a little bit, the trunk wouldn't open. We have to change the nitrous bottle, which is back there. So just a little hectic. But honestly, this is normal stuff. It takes a lot to make a drift car go around the track. So after you've done two battles right in a row, I need a a little bit for, for me and a little bit for the car, and then we'll be ready for the next battle. Yeah, exactly, which is going to be Frederick Osbo. So this course out here, is it changing with the weather? Like, this weather is just so weird, right? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely changing, and the reason why I put it in the wall is it was a little bit more slick than I thought it was going to be. When I followed Chris, I was like, oh, the track's back to normal, but it's not. So got some figuring. Okay, Matt, thanks. Thanks, guys. Guys. Ryan, that's a first. We got uh, we got a driver eating while he's being interviewed. <laughs> and like, and, and I don't know, I don't know if his mom or dad will be like, "What are you doing, man?" Or they're gonna be like, "Right on, bro. Do do it your way." Like Frank Sinatra, right? You gotta love him, man. Matt Field is amazing. <laughs> he's he's like I said, just chilling. He got those American racing wheels wrapped with those Falcon tires, and grabbing snacks, snack attack here. And uh, are, are we get? Do we get any clarity here as far as uh, rubbing his racing comp timeouts? What, what was what was being called here exactly? Okay. Yeah, I believe the yeah. judges want to see a, a uh, second and third look here. Yep, just getting them, getting them to buffer. As we are, uh, we can see Kazuya Taguchi already. It looks like he's ready to go, man. I lost the back bumper, but that's about it. And we're already seeing Hull and Essa. And uh, Lontane got you here on the mic. Let's uh, yeah. walk us through it. So looking at what happened here, I'm going to wait till we get to the right yeah. part of the video first. Obviously good, you know, good run right there. You see Kazuya throw some more angle at it. Almost some contact there. Look at that three-wheel motion. Toguchi yeah. pulling that front right off. So right here is where I want to get your attention. You can see that Dylan completely misses outside zone three while Toguchi is there. And you can see Dylan's actually ahead of Toguchi right here. And he's on a really tight line. And he oh, makes contact rock. right there and then right there yep. again. So it's really Dylan that uh, I think is in the wrong place. He's not running this, the right line. And of course, if he's on a tighter line like that, he's going to be faster than Taguchi and he's going to end up getting in his way. And that's, uh, I believe, what happened. And, and I think the other judges agreed. And just to be clear, this is for the assignment of a competition timeout, the usage that's, of it. That's all, that's it, all, that's all that for. really matters. Everything else you guys are going to be judging. Exactly, yeah. There, there was nothing that uh, constituted a, an incomplete or anything like that. But you can see that Dylan was definitely in the wrong place. And he loses proximity here as well. And then it ends up on a, kind of the wrong line as well. Yeah. But that's all a, a result of missing a zone and being faster than the lead car uh, by not uh, following their line, basically. If I'm Kazuya Taguchi, I put my hands on my car because you're not at fault. He, and he doesn't need to util utilize a competition timeout. Yeah, really, all he had was a rear quarter, rear corner of his bumper that was touched. Maybe the, the left, wheel. The front left corner. Like maybe the, well, yeah. I mean, I've, I've, it was tire on tire, yeah. you know. It's up to him if he wants to do it. Yeah. Well, maybe he did and you just didn't see. He's a magician, dude. Okay. All right, Ryan, why are you flexing on me, bro? There you go. Oh, see, look, look. Uh, maybe maybe he didn't and you didn't <laughs> see, Ryan. <laughs> Everything's fine, bro. Why, why are you mad dogging me? <laughs> when we come back, we'll see Taguchi and Dylan Hughes, our final battle of the Royal Purple Top 16. You can see Essa, the full or Essa and full pull Taylor Hole. Right there, it went wrong for Dylan Hughes. Just getting aggressive, it's, he knew that's what he needed to do because Yuta Gucci definitely a weapon. But uh, unfortunately, you know, you saw the contact being made later on. Really great shot here, Kazuya, higher Ryan, and Dylan very aggressive. Yeah, I mean, I think we really have to take this battle uh, as a purely judged battle. The real reason for the judges assigning fault is because Dylan wanted to get hands on the car. So he did make a mistake there. Overall, it's a pretty solid chase, minus that mistake. And Taguchi had a good lead run, so we still have 
very much an ambiguous battle uh, in terms of who it is favoring right now. And uh, we'll see Taguchi uh, now switch spots with Dylan Hughes going to the lead. Looks like, uh, again, Dylan calling that comp timeout. Very smart choice on his behalf. Taguchi, I assume, went back to his pit, worked on it, got some hands on it, checked it out, make sure everything's running good. Dylan and that fast orange Permatex, two Jay-Z powered BMW pulling up to the line, the Royal Purple Top 16. And uh, getting, getting the cameras affixed. And we are clear to send. Track is hot. Cars are clear to send. Second half of this battle, Dylan Hughes out front. Local boy from the Pacific Northwest as well. Him, Travis Reeder, Chase Schmidt, who got on the box. Can Dylan, here we go. Dylan Hughes out of the gate. Already throws it in. Nice aggressive flick, huge. No, but oh, dips down. Kazuya Taguchi get lost in the smoke. As Dylan worked his way from mid to high and Taguchi dropping down. He started out high, now gets low. Through the power alley into that third outer zone. Into the one and only front clip to rule them all. Now to that final outside zone. Brian, that bank was really interesting, right? I mean, Dylan, the way he threw it in, he was mid and then worked his way. Kazuya did the opposite. Yeah, I think uh, that big flick phased Kazuya Taguchi, but not in a good way for, for Dylan, at least right. looking at it the first time. It was a massive flick. Rate to angle was insane, but he pulls out of it and see uh, Taguchi is closing there. So he has to back off. At least that's what I'm seeing initially. And so all of this can be attributed to that. And this is the lead driver responsibilities that the judges are talking about. And I'll be interested to see if um, either, any three of them agree with that. The rest of the run, Dylan does a great job here in the lead position, driving very smooth through inside clip number one and getting very deep into that final outside zone. So. He may have got a little bit over aggressive there and not really gave or given an opportunity to chase uh, was to, to uh, Kazuya Taguchi on the big bank. So let's, uh, let's see how the judges interpret that as well and what will the outcome be and who's moving on into the grade eight. All right, so uh, you can see the vehicles. Again, the final battle of the top 16. Taguchi and Hughes, very, like you said, Ryan, very interesting initiation. Kazuya trying to figure it out, kind of scratching his head a little bit there and then trying to work it out. Well, we are going to see a replay here. Uh, so let's uh, get Ryan Lantane on as well and walk yeah. us through this side-by-side, -side, Ryan. The BC Racing uh, instant replay. What do you make of uh, the initiation by Hughes and how much of a role did it, have to, did it play against uh, Taguchi? Well, you have to expect... Uh, you have to expect that that speed that it's going to affect the chase driver in a pretty big way, and uh, Dylan did dip down quite a bit there, and then of course we did deem him responsible for that that contact against uh, Taguchi in the chase position, but it really didn't affect Taguchi that much. It seemed like Taguchi was unaffected by that contact yeah. and kept drifting through. All right, assessing both those runs, let's see what we got here, and I believe the judges are inputting the verdict. Matt Sopa hanging out. That's our starter and our Victor Pointer router. I guess that's what you call it. Slide him left for Taguchi, right for Hughes. And there we go. Chris Yule says Taguchi, as does Lantane. And Brian Eggert says Kazuya Taguchi gets the win. Unfortunately, Dylan Hughes knocked out. But uh, Kazuya Taguchi will move on. So Kazuya Taguchi. He's going to be going against Vaughn Gittin Jr. Our great eight is set. And that's a big win for him. Yeah, that's it is. A, a, a denial of Dylan Hughes getting into the great eight for the third straight event. He was uh, pretty consistent there, had some solid yep. outcomes in St. Louis, but it comes to a stop in the top 16 against Kazuya Taguchi. All right, so our top eight, Link ECU, the official engine management unit of Formula Drift. The Link ECU top eight is upon us. Taylor Hole, Michael Essa. See uh, Taylor Hole warming up his Achilles tires. Michael Essa, so it was a, a win-lose situation for Achilles tire. 
as. There we have it, the Link Engine Management Top 8. Taylor Hole, Michael Essa, there are the numbers, there are the stats. You can see uh, fairly equally horsepowered. Essa, very smooth. Taylor Hole just uh, you know, progressing over the years from S14 now to this Cadillac for a second year, sophomore season for this vehicle. Looks like it's really working out for him. Maybe harnessing the, uh, the power of the Intimidator graphic. Looking like uh, the vintage Earnhardt, Mr. Goodwrench livery. And that might be the cowboy hat that's bringing up some good luck as well. Here we go. Michael Lessa will lead. Taylor Hole giving chase. The FCP Euro Liquamali BMW. Coming out of the gate. Here goes Michael Lessa initiating. Right into the bank. Taylor Hole needs to gain some ground. Like I said, very smooth but very fast is Michael Lessa. Shahara with a similar style here into that second outside. To, oh, a Taylor Hole correction there. And that's a massive mistake there for Taylor Hole. Unfortunately, might have lost power. Shut her down as Essa continues on. Didn't see any contact. It looks like maybe just got lost in the smoke and then unfortunately just shut down. Yeah, and these grade eight battles are really important. The winner here will make it into the final four, which pretty much guarantees that you're going to be at least competing for third place. You can see Essa gets a great jump. We don't get the proximity that we saw from Hole earlier in competition, but let's see what happens here through outside zones two and three. It looks like there was a correction there that ended up causing Taylor Hole have to have to straighten out, and then at that point he shut it down. So it's hard to say whether or not it was a mechanical or whether he knew he had an incomplete, didn't want to finish the run. Let's take a look at it again. Oh, yeah, you can see even before he leaves outside zone two, that seems more like a problem with the car than just a standard mistake. But he is going to take it back to the line, and it looks like we're going to keep things going and uh, find out who's going to move on into the final four. Taylor Hole says, you know what, just let's go. Lick the stamp and send it, bro. No big deal. Let's keep the party going. Taylor Hole and Michael Essa. Cameras are fixed. Track is clear. Yeah, it could have popped out of gear or something happened. I don't know. We'll uh, we'll find out in between round three and four, a.k.a. tonight or tomorrow morning. And clean start. Taylor will up front. Mike Lassa in the chase position. A drag race to the bank. Hole initiates. Let's see if Essa can gain some ground coming from the bank to the infield. Both of them, similar line in the second outer zone through the power alley. Around the front clip, both of them. And both of them diving into that last outside zone. I think a little strategy there, Ryan, as Michael Essa knew he had a major advantage. Yeah, definitely he was not sandbagging. He did enough to get the job done here. Gave a reasonable chase, all things considered, but a very smart competitor in Michael Essa. Let's take a look at it again here. Hull is really wanting Essa to make an unforced error in order to force a, a one more time. But Essa, dealing with it like the veteran that he is, keeps relative distance and proximity, not making any major mistakes that would get into the incomplete category. And this will give him a, a, a smooth berth right into the final four. All right, as uh, Taylor Hole and Essa, let's slide him left for Hole, but I'm um, pretty sure, yes, there you go. Michael Essa gets the win. He's going to the final four. Michael Essa advances on. Taylor Hole knocked out. All right, moving on to the next battle of the Link ECU. Grade eight, Frederick Osbo and Matt Field, like you said, Ryan. These guys have, uh, have exchanged some paint, most recently at St. Louis, round one and two of the FD 2020 championship, celebrating 17 years. Frederick Osbo, you can see there's the bracket. Here is the landscape here at Evergreen Speedway. Next up, Osbo and Field, other side, Yoshihara and Pollock, and then finally, Von Gittin Jr. and Kazuya Taguchi. Let everyone know you're watching. We're live from Seattle, local time. About 440. Uh, quarter tell five. 
Some awesome driving yesterday in Pro 2. Again, congratulations to our winner, Dmitry Brutsky, Chase Schmidt, and then uh, Mata. And here's a look at our point standings coming into this round after two rounds of competition. Odie Bakshis, Ryan Turk. So, I mean, if you're looking at this, Odie out, Ryan Turk out, Chelsea Denofa out, Frederick Osbo and Field. Look, you can see there fourth and fifth. So, uh, some some changing potential of the guards here if Field comes out on top, taking down Osbo. Ryan, what do you think? I mean, going off of what we've seen, you know, Field versus Forsberg, Osbo versus Turk. What do you think is going to come out on top? You know. Osbo has, has looked like the clear leader of the championship uh, in moments in the first three rounds so far. But Matt Field, to me, seems to have a different energy about him this year. Yeah. And um, I think that's a very dangerous Matt Field to have. We know that he wants nothing less than a championship of his own. And these are the kind of battles that you want to find out whether or not you've got it in you. Mm. If you can take out Frederick Osbo, he's got a nice clear path given that the uh, top three guys have already bowed out of competition. This is a huge opportunity for both Field and Osbo. You didn't answer the question. Who do you think is going to win? Oh. <laughs> way, to really, way to really skirt around that one there, Ryan. Oh, look, well, we got to get to the battle. All right, here we go. Frederick Osbo out front. Matt Field giving chase. All joking aside, yeah, this is, uh, this is either of these guys' battle. It's going to be a good one. Osbo initiates. High on the bank, Matt Field. Said a different spirited field here in 2020. Osbo with the new car. Oh, wow, look at Matt Field. Gets to the side of Osbo. Now coming down into the power alley transitions. Very clean from both of them. Matt Field not mimicking the exact angle, but definitely getting close. Transitions now into that final outside zone. Both of them filling it. Osbo uh, avoiding the jump, so he uh, you know, avoids breaking anything. Look well, at it again. let's take a look at it again. Field initiates on a slightly lower line, and he may have done that to gain proximity. But look at the car's got incredible grip. He's keeping up with Osbo, making a little bit of some adjustments. Doesn't get out to outside zone two as deep as Osbo, but is back on it by three and inside clip number one. Good transition there by Osbo, who fills that outside zone. Matt, du Matt Field does as well, but loses a little bit of ground in the last 60 feet before the finish line. Here you see a slight difference in angle a little bit lower line but really good on proximity by Matt Field Osbo once again demonstrating complete control as the lead driver he does such a great job with this and we, we really saw this punctuated and underlined in the uh, James Dean era yeah. of the past three years about how important that is to get that solid lead out front just makes it so hard for your competitor and uh, as the sun comes out yes. we're going to see these track temperatures change a little bit. We'll have to see how that affects drivers. But first, let's get to the resolution of this battle here as Matt Field takes the lead against Frederick Osbo. And I've not seen any rain in the forecast for the next seven days here. His first dip, but regardless, right now we got Matt Field throwing it into the bank. Nice angle, Frederick Osbo. Even a little higher, really mimicking. Drops down a little bit. Here goes Field. Oh, and Field hits it again. Oh, man. As Matt Field slams into the wall once again, similar to that of Forsberg, and it looks like the tire defeated. Osbo will continue on regardless. He does not need to, but Osbo finishes it out. Ah, oh, what a bummer. Osbo's Kendall's, hyped. Yeah, Osbo is feeling it, man. But uh, man, unfortunately for Matt Field, hits the wall. Shout out Ron Ball. Thanks for watching, homeboy. Same spot there for Matt Field, and he mentioned in his interview with Lorette, it's a little bit more slippery than I thought. You can see the back end starting to rotate out. It gets into the wall. Ugh. You mentioned the tire D beating. That seemed to almost happen simultaneously with the wall hit. Yeah. And they have, that may have been from the compression. It was a pretty tough hit at a high rate of speed. Let's see from this angle here. He's going to really max it out. And then you can see he's just not able to control the car after that. And of course, without a tire mounted properly, that does not help either. And yeah, D beads as soon as he hits the wall. Yeah. So tough break for Matt Field. He, he was in and had a fighting chance there against Frederick Osbo, more than a fighting chance. He was in the battle with Osbo and just made a critical mistake that put him out of competition. Got word from uh, Taylor Hole's spotter, his wife, 
Tamara. She says mechanical, car cut off, computer, everything shut down. So that's unfortunate. Just backtracking there. But right now we know the uh, the outcome here. Frederick Osbo gets the win as Osbo continues on, Ryan. So shaking up things. We thought Matt Field, you know, sitting in fifth. Frederick Osbo sitting in fourth with the other drivers ahead of him being knocked out shaking up the point standings it's still a solid finish for matt field obviously oh, yeah. getting those eight uh, those great eight points it's going to help him against denofa turk and bakchis but now it's wide open for frederick osbo as he is uh the last remaining top five driver here we go to the other side of the bracket all falcon tire dai Oshihara, jtp justin pollock Nick Fosekis, what's up? Watching from his home in Southern California. I'm sure Jay Brad is as well. And cheering on their Falcon boys. We're going to throw it down to Lorette Nickel, girl on the ground. Who you got? What you got? Well, Michael Essa was gesturing to his team that he was having some steering problems. Is that what you were experiencing on the track? Yeah, so in the warm-up box, I went to uh, scrub the front tires in, crank the wheel, and I heard like a clunk, kind of a stickiness in the steering wheel. Tried to put it out of my mind because I didn't want to think about it on my lead run and everything felt okay on the lead. Uh, but then when I was following Taylor, coming off the bank with him, added a little more angle and it bound up again for a second. Uh, so I had to like yank on it to get it to go and then got it to go finally. Uh, but just want to make sure that we're not going to have that problem again when we go into the finals or semifinals here. And it's sketchy when you're going into the bank at 85 or 90 or whatever we're doing, throwing the car in there and hoping that the steering sticks. So yeah, I guess... Uh, Fingers crossed, but I think we'll find out what's wrong with it. All right, Mike, thanks so much. Thank you. Guys. Right on. Thank you. Yeah, Essa, man, does, <laughs> not getting some lucky breaks. His hard work and team looking forward to uh, to putting him on the box. But if you can remember, you know, he texted me in St. Louis. was like, I'm down, a, I'm down a cylinder, man. It's not running right. So he pulled the plug on that thing. And to his surprise, it actually ran pretty decent. But just a few gremlins here and there, man. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah, and then that's part of, you know, the potential attrition that happens with these doubleheader events. We talk about the top five guys. Uh, that are remaining in the competition. Number six, just outside the top five, is on the left-hand side of your screen, Justin Pollock. A big opportunity here. Unfortunately, it comes at doing battle against his teammate, Daijiro Yoshihara. Well, let's see what happens here against these two Falcon drivers. Here we go, Dai Yoshihara out front. JTP in the chase position. Dai initiates. Like I said, two very different styles. Very smooth Dai Yoshihara pulling away from JTP. That turbocharged LS under the hood of that turn 14 vehicle the BRZ. Bringing it all the way out. That second outside zone through the power alley. Look at JTP lunging forward. Some separation there between Guy and Justin. Ooh, almost uh, almost losing an angle there, Ryan. Yeah, Dai is, is deceptively very fast, and it could be because his car sounds quite differently uh, against the Mustang out there. But uh, very surprised to see that he was able to pull a gap like that on Justin Pollock on the big bank. You see, he gets right on throttle, and we've got a 2-3 car gap, which is, is not huge, but from what we've seen so far in the, in the grade eight and parts of the top 16, the judges really want to see you stay close in proximity on the big bank because of the weighting of how important that is. You see that slight correction there at inside clip one from JTP and Dai not completely filling that final outside zone, but an otherwise pretty solid lead run there. So now we'll get to switch things up as Justin Pollock goes to the lead. Yes, sir. JTP will be out front. Dai Oshihara. That right-hand drive, BRZ. Again, congratulations to him winning that uh, that Pikes Peak class, overall winner in, the, in his particular class. Justin Pollock. Been doing a lot of off-roading lately. Hitting the dirt with his family, his wife and son. And Justin Pollock will lead. Dai Oshihara given chase. And just a little hush falls over the crowd, gathering nerves. And obviously, nerves racing. And making sure track is clear. And we'll be good to go. And there we go, clear to send. Send it, fellas. Justin Pollock and Dai Oshihara. Justin initiates a little earlier than Dai Oshihara. Point of no return. Big angle there. Dai, good proximity. Not mimicking the angle exactly. Dropping down into the power alley. 
We'll see Justin lift just a touch, allowing Dio Shahar to gain that proximity. Massive angle there from Justin. Dio Shahar kind of beelining to the side of Justin. And both of them really going deep into that final outside zone, Ryan. I, I think Justin had a really strong lead run there. Yeah, but there is a, a point of difference here worth pointing out, and that's the ability for Dai to kind of reel in Justin. Now, Justin is allowing that because he's driving a pretty solid lead run, but you can see we saw that two to three car gap when Justin Pollock was in the chase. We did not see that with Dai. Now, we'll want to see how Dai got to outside zone two, but in terms of this inside clip, he does have a little bit less angle. He's keeping the proximity on, and JTP does a pretty good job getting just to the edge of that final outside zone. Here's the big bank once again. Die right here looking pretty good in the mimic, surging forward, attacking, attacking, attacking. Not getting all the way out to outside zone two. Three, he does it pretty close the way Justin did it, but a little bit less angle there. So, you know, sacrificing a little bit here and there for proximity, and that will that be enough to lean it in his direction? All right, and we're looking for the side-by-side -side here, Ryan. This is going to be a, a, the BC Racing side-by-side -side replay. Well, Justin Pollock out in the lead on the right. You can see there is a distinct difference in proximity, right? So let's chalk that up for Dai in terms of the chase runs. The lead runs looking pretty similar so far. Both guys hitting the, that inside clip. Now let's look at the outside zone four. Does Justin get a little bit deeper? Maybe. But if so, it was very, barely noticeable. Does it come down to the chase runs here? All right. As we are, we are getting the verdict in. Slide him left for Dai Yoshihara, right for Justin Pollock. And there you have it. Daijiro Yoshihara gets the win and takes it one step further. Unfortunately for JTP, he is knocked out. Yeah, so there you go. Michael Essa versus Frederick Osbo. And now our final battle of the Link Engine Management Great 8. Can see Von Kitten Jr. warming up his Nitto tires there in the burnout box. Ryan, it's a beautiful day now, man. Grab yeah, it. super stoked. I mean, obviously, we expected a lot more rain today than came through. Shh. And uh, no, 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 only you oh, have okay. the announcer's curse. I'm fine. <laughs> you're good. You're immune. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're not an announcer. You're just, you're just fine. <laughs> All right, so uh, Final Four is shaping up, and one gentleman that's already in it is Frederick Osbo. Lorette? Thank you, Jared. So Freddie is in his car, and I know you can't see it now, but this back glass window was all shattered, and they have no idea how it happened. But Frederick, you knew going against Matt Field that was going to be an all-out battle, and I feel like you're really pushing the limits here. Yeah, I'm trying. That was records or checkers. It was one of those where you know that you line up, one of us is going to get put on the trailer probably with a mangled car. And Matt's been doing phenomenal here today. Great runs. Obviously took out Chris, who's been on fire as well. And I think what happened is they gambled a little bit too much with the car setup. If I understand correctly, he DB'd it on the wall, which is a sign of really low tire pressure. And we definitely ran low as well, uh, but we had the edge, um, kept it together, and uh, move on. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank Guys. All right on. Thank you so much, Lorette. Yeah, Freddie. Uh, I mean, I, I, you know, these guys, Frederick says, you know, being put on the trailer wrecked up. But here's the deal. I think these guys forget that they sometimes they're just, you know, you're so fixated on that one battle. You forget that, hey, FYI, you got a whole nother day of competition tomorrow and a whole nother round tomorrow. Yeah, it's a whole new realm of mental and right? physical capacity needed for these doubleheader rounds. But uh, as we see, the battle in front of us here, Vaughn Gittin Jr. versus Kazuya Taguchi, both drivers making their way into a very important part of competition. Two very Which, different styles, man. Two very different styles, you know, pure Japanese making his way over, doing a great job building his program, and the 2010 champion. Here we go. Vaughn Gittin Jr. will lead that Monster Energy Nano Tire Ford Performance Mustang RTR. Kazuya Taguchi up garage, GT Radial S15 jumps back. In that VR-powered vehicle, Vaughn consistent. Look at that, man. Seeing some corrections from the front wheels, but he is hammering down the professional fun haver transitions into that third outer zone, dialing in on the inside clip. And number four, OZ, that outer zone, Kazuya Taguchi. Taking that three-wheel motion from Vaughn Gittin Jr., man. He is uh, rocking and rolling all over the track there, Ryan. 
Yeah, that was a, a really good start here to the battle. Let's take a look at this and see how Vaughn did up on that big bank as he came through the camera that we have attached to the wall there. It looked like he, he could have been a little bit higher on a higher line. Yeah, you can see that as he comes down off the bank. Kazuya Taguchi adjusts, and now he's trying to catch up and, and drop in and keep the pressure on. But see that straightening right there? Loses a little bit of angle against Vaughn right before inside clip number one, and then comes off outside zone four. Doesn't follow Vaughn all the way out there. Let's take a look from the drone. You get a better perspective up top. See, Vaughn is still a little bit off of the wall. Comes off that zone early. That's an area where Taguchi can actually make up some ground relative to Vaughn in his lead run. But Taguchi right there makes that mistake leaving outside zone three. And then in four, he cuts in really tight. And then the Vaughn is still going deep into that section while Taguchi was not able to follow him out. Yeah, just again, the observation there, especially with that overhead drone shot is you see the line that Vaughn's, Vaughn's taking. We'd like to see him hang out on that wall more, drag that bumper along, hang out and then drop down. He's going from, you know, he's just cutting the apex of that turn, going from the bank down to the infield. And the judges really, uh, really want to see them hang it out and then come down and transition to the power alley. And uh, and I think that's a line that, that both Chelsea and him are taking. So we'll see how the outcome goes. Again, because we did have some mistakes, but he's probably going to tighten it up here now that he's out front. On the juniors in the rear view mirror. Let's see how the chrome nose throws down. Because we Taguchi. See, mimicking the angle is Vaughn getting Jr. really high as Taguchi, and there he hangs it out. Comes down a little bit early as well, and that's, uh, I see a head shaking here from Ryan Lontain as we come down now into that front clip, and now one more outside zone. Taguchi, wow, gets all the way out there. Quick little correction, avoid the wall, and uh, gets up into the jump. Well, wow. Taguchi had the right strategy there to try to better Vaughn on the big bank. Uh, but Vaughn was not giving him an inch. Let's revisit here what happened. See, Taguchi is right up against the wall, and Vaughn is trying to keep that line and angle consistent. Taguchi comes off very early. Here it is again from another angle. You can see that Vaughn kind of dives in. He's starting to reel him in here. Taguchi's nice and high on the bank. Then he really kicks the angle out, comes in really tight, and he completely blows through outside zone number two, Get, gets back to three. And luckily, Vaughn was able to make a quick adjustment and follow Taguchi's line. I think the chase run from uh, Vaughn was stronger than Taguchi's chase run, and it's really going to come down to those leads. Here's one more shot as we take a look at how Vaughn approached Taguchi as he was coming off the bank. See, Vaughn also angles up, and he, he smartly follows him on the line that Taguchi is driving. Otherwise, Taguchi may have been able to get away a little bit more aggressively by driving through that center section. So the judge is now taking both runs into account, and we'll see who's moving on. All right, overhead shot here, seeing the, uh, the 2010 champ, Vaughn Gittin Jr. against Taguchi. Been competing in Formula Drift for a few years here. This is our final battle of the grade eight, already in. Michael Essa, Frederick Osbo, Dai Oshihara, all champions. Will another champion join them? Or will Kazuya Taguchi spoil the party? There we go, slide him left for Von Gittin Jr., right for Kazuya Taguchi. And Von Gittin Jr. gets Chris Yule's vote. Lontaine says one more time, and Brian Egger says Von Gittin Jr. So it's all champion final four. Von Gittin Jr. will be going against Dai Oshihara, Frederick Osbo, will be going against Michael Essa. So all champions here in the final four, Ryan. Yeah, this is uh, definitely a, a bit of a, a changing demographic of drivers from the first two rounds. And for me, this is actually really exciting because we're gonna see some top 10 shakeups for sure. Yep. Some guys uh, moving into the top 10 and also probably a shakeup of, of the top five drivers yep. pretty dramatically. And uh, we, we really are going to find out a lot after we finish up tomorrow. But I think one of the things that will be interesting is how people, especially drivers such as Odi Bocchis, have been able to remedy any problems with their vehicle overnight to get back to competition. This is what we talked about at the beginning of the season, yep. and now it's kind of coming into play here. It's not about just loading it on the car waiting a few weeks, getting to the next yeah. round. we got to make it happen tomorrow. tomorrow. Bro. <laughs> yeah. Go grab a meal and start getting to work and make sure it's up to snuff. We are entering into the Type S Type 4, the Type S Touring Products, the official lighting of Formula Drift. As uh, taking a look at uh, overall, you can see 
there are champions in the final four who's moving on. You know, we saw Esbo get, Osbo get the win. We saw Essa, you know, and this is the championship history. You can see most recently our three-time not defending champion, James Dean, unfortunately not making over. Shout out to uh, the machine, James Dean. Chris Forsberg won in 2016. You can see Osbo, Forsberg, Essa. So, uh, yeah, here's a few highlights from the great eight here. We saw Taylor Hall try to throw down. He had some gremlins, and the uh, car just shut down on him, Ryan, and the FCP Euro Liquid Molly. BMW Michael Essa, like you said, he's having some power steering issues. Hopefully that doesn't uh, show up and rear his ugly head against Osbo. Speaking of Osbo, taking out Field. Well, we saw with Matt Field uh, two times in the same area going into the wall, and the last one cost him uh, pretty dearly. And... Uh, it was against different drivers, I believe. Yeah. I saw that uh, with Chris and um, and then there with Osbo. So tough break there for Field, but he's looking phenomenal this year. It's allowed Osbo to get into the final four and keep pushing forward. Daijiro Yoshihara, for me, has been a little bit of a sleeper this event. I mean, it may just be because, you know, as you mentioned before, the audible uh, coming from his car is so much different than everybody else. That he seems to be overpowered by the V8s but he's deceptively fast on the bank and really closed the door in his chase runs at really critical moments. Yeah, no, it's a, it's definitely exciting. Uh, you say he's overpowered by the V8s, but he's got a turbo V8 himself. But uh, speaking of V8s, the professional fun haver, all American boy, Vaughn Gittin Jr. is with the Rat Nickel. In his car right now. And we're actually here, I'm moving out of here. Vaughn, I'm right behind you. Come here, dear. So Vaughn Gettin Jr. getting ready for battle against Dai Yoshihara. It is a former champion's final four. You're going against Dai. What do you have to do to beat that man? Uh, I just need to do what I've been doing all night. Um, this has been a, a extremely, extremely challenging event for us, just chasing the weather. Looks like uh, looks like the stars have aligned to give us some nice, some nice battle weather for the rest of the night. And um, I just need to go out there, stay focused, and do what I'm doing. Uh, thing. It's just, uh, it's just, uh, you know what, uh, what I'm gonna do behind the wheel, and I just need to be out there and be flawless. Uh, some amazing drivers, um, and we're just gonna go out and and run it. You know, we've we've got a great car. It's doing exactly what I want. Putting, I can put it wherever I want. So I just need to stay in my zone. Okay. Well, how do you stay flawless out here on a course like this? Um. Well, now that the weather is consistent, we just go out and do what we do, right? We've been doing this before. I've been here for a long time at, uh, at this track, and uh, you just need to go out and, and breathe and uh, keep, keep the nerves down and just trust your team, trust your equipment, and go and run hard. And, uh, you know, we've got some amazing Nitto tires under this car. They're, after two laps, they look incredible. And um, we're just going to go out and run it, run it as hard as we can, and uh, we're leaving nothing out there on the track this weekend. I was not happy with uh, how St. Louis ended up. Uh, for me personally, really proud of Chelsea, but I want both of us to win every event. Vaughn, thank you so much. Woo! <laughs> of course, obligatory woo. Uh, it wouldn't be Vaughn if he didn't throw it out there. Here we go. Frederick Osbo, Michael Lessa, Osbo leads, initiates. Again, two former champs, two di very different cars. Freddie throwing it in, really blazing on the bank. And now coming down into the power alley. Here comes Osbo, Essa, a couple car lengths behind. Wow, big flick there by Osbo. See if he can hold on to it. Yes, he does. Essa almost getting in the side of that rock star energy drink, Toyota GR Supra. And Essa hitting that, uh, avoiding the jump as Osbo goes for it. Man, the FCP Euro Liqui Moly. BMW of Essa on Achilles tires, looking strong. Yeah, and so much flex on that Supra, yeah. it's just incredible. And Michael Essa taking the fight to Frederick Osbo from the get-go on the bank. You can see that car separation there, and that's going to give us a point of comparison when we switch things up. But Osbo, once again, same strategy. This time on outside zone three, he cuts it off a little bit early, but still perfect on that inside clip. Look at that transition from Essa. Yeah. Doesn't completely stay in the pocket with it, falls back a little bit. Here it is on the big bank once again. Essa starts off great. He was right on the back bumper. Then you got about you know a half a car distance. So he's doing a pretty decent job. He had a little bit of a shimmy there coming off the bank into outside zone two. And as Osbo kind of came up a little bit shallow on outside zone three, Essa was attacking on the inside after the final uh, inside clip and then surging through that final outside zone. So switching things up now, Michael Essa will go to the lead and Frederick Osbo will chase him down. 
Yeah, big high horsepower vehicles here. Essa and Osbo, the Type S Final Four, the Type S Final Four here. As Type S, the official lighting of Formula Drift. Hashtag FDSEA. Hunter Taylor watching from Norway. And uh, Michael and his wife and daughter there hanging out at home. Here we go. Essa throwing it in. Essa out front. Osbo in the chase. You can see him mimicking the angle. Wow, look at Osbo. Oh, dropping down a little bit as Essa keeps it high. Osbo mimicking that. Wow, really all over Essa. Jumping right back to the side. That's a very smooth, really clean, performing surgery on the track. It's all the way out to that zone. Excellent run there in the lead position of Michael Essa. Did he just take down Frederick Osbo? Would love to see them side by side, Ryan. Well, that was uh, the first wow. big smoke battle I think that we've seen. Yeah. And it was actually really hard to see the finish there. Uh, but it was awesome to watch as we take a look at the overhead. Absolute proximity from Frederick Osbo in the chase position, duration and angle. He had a couple slight variations there, or little movements in the car, but Essa really deep into outside zone two, just gets on the outside or inside of uh, number three. Great job on, on outside zone four to finish up, and Osbo comes in and takes the tighter line to stay right with them. So <laughs> really good battle here. Wow. I think the leads are, are pretty comparable. It may come down to the chase runs. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I really liked Essa's line. I think he had uh, just a lot of impact, but Osbo was right there. It seemed that uh, he, he compromised a little bit there. Here's the side-by-side, -side, the BC Racing side-by-side -side instant replay. You could see Osbo really strong out front. Yeah, lead runs up top are pretty similar. Osbo a little bit closer in the chase. Great job by Essa in outside zone. Two and three, pretty similar. And then on the, on the outside zone four, Essa got really deep there on uh, his lead run. This is pretty close. I mean, I think very close. You know, Osbo had some better proximity. A Essa had a really similar lead. Um, man, this is a tough one. Yeah, our, our judges. Here's one more look from the sky on Essa and Osbo. Remember the the winner of this going to the finals. The loser going to that third place battle. The Type S Finals, who's going on, or the third place Type S Battle. One more look side by side, Lontane, I'm gonna let you wrap out here. All right, we have a nice view from the drone. What I noticed about this run, uh, these runs, is that Osbo was deeper in outside zone one. You could see he was, his front right tire was up above the dotted line for li uh, lane one, or that highest lane. And then you can see that uh, Mike Essa had his front right tire below that line. And I know that's nitpicking, but we're really looking for uh, the absolute best from these guys. So that was one thing that I saw for Osbo. I did see that uh, he was a little bit deeper in a couple of the outside zones as well. I think um, in Mike's lead, he did miss outside zone number three. Whereas uh, in uh, Osbo's lead, he did a much better job there. And I Ooh. think Osbo had some pretty good proximity. So did Michael, though. So it's it's going to be. Uh, and here we. Frederick we Osbo gets the win. Frederick Osbo two to one. So Yule goes with one more time, but Egger and Lontaine say Frederick Osbo gets the victory and he advances on. Ryan, are you shocked with that outcome? Do you do you agree with that, Frederick Osbo, or uh, what were you thinking? I'm I'm not completely shocked with it. Uh, Osbo seemed to be the more aggressive driver in the chase, and you know, to what Ryan said, you know, perhaps the if you zero out the leads because they were so similar, then maybe you could give the edge to Osbo. I thought Essa did a much better job in outside zone four on his lead. He went a lot deeper in there, but as you said, or as Ryan said, you know, it, it's nitpicking, right? So. I can see the one more time, and I can also see it going to Osbo. Yeah, Osbo, these guys, uh, these guys scrutinizing. They're still the judges still wrapping out here. But uh, Frederick Osbo goes to the final battle. Who's he going against? Yoshihara or Von Gittin Jr. As uh, again, yep. Go ahead. Yeah, please. It's all right. As uh, a <laughs> and. Uh, And we'll go to the other side of the bracket. Again, Dai Oshihara versus Vaughn Gittin Jr. So Essa waits in the wings. Here we are 
in the Type S. Top four, Dio Shahara, Vaughn Gittin Jr. There are the numbers. There are the stats. Two champions going against each other. Vaughn Gittin Jr., uh, you know, I, I, Vaughn, as, uh, as cool and calm as he seems a little frazzled, doesn't, doesn't seem 100% as far as, like you said, very frustrating, difficult weekend. Uh, you know, wants to get wants to get his nerves, get them all together, and here we go. Dio Shihara, again, two very different styles. Dio Shihara, very smooth. Von Kitten Jr. looks like he's coming violent with that Ford Mustang. And here we go. Dai initiates the turn 14 distribution. Oh, and there we go. That is what Von Kitten Jr. was looking for. Looks like he found the secret ingredient. As now comes in that second outside zone, transitioning, throws it to the door. Risk it for the biscuit as Dai Oshihara brings it around and Vaughn Gittin Jr. whips it into that final outside zone. Ryan, great chase job there by Vaughn, but uh, again, the great lead run will result in a phenomenal chase. Yeah, Vaughn is kind of on one today. And uh, unfortunately, he's also going up against a driver that just seems to pull speed out of everywhere. And uh, you, we talked about the, the fluidity, the consistency and the style of Daijiro Yoshihara and it's really going up against the, the brute strength and power of Vaughn Gittin Jr. Here it is from above first. You can see that surging attack by Vaughn, but it's clean, right? Like he's not really making too many angle adjustments there. He gets a great jump on Dai. Now let's see where, where Dai is up on relative to the bank. So he's nice and high on that highest white line. That's where that one little correction that Vaughn had to make to back off for a second, but then he gets right back on it to follow Dai into outside zone two. Both drivers do that pretty well. Vaughn a little bit tighter on outside zone number three, with Dai maybe getting the, the better of that section, and then a great job by Dai on outside zone four, but Vaughn follows up trying to close the door towards the end, so a very competitive battle here to kick things off in the final four. Here we go, alternating the order. Vaughn getting junior, getting the clean air. The RTR, signature grill RTR for a new generation of Ford tuning. We see, uh, again, the, from drift to dirt, Vaughn Kitten Jr. Giving away some uh, some vehicles there, courtesy of Ford. And here we go, Vaughn Kitten Jr. out front. Get those big Nitto tire meat hooks closer to that wall. Dio Shar dropping back quite a bit as Vaughn really riding that wall, making those banners flat, make them flat. That second outside zone, bringing in, here comes Dai. Vaughn getting junior, oh, and Dai has to back off as Vaughn continues on. Who's going to the finals? Who's going against Osbo? Gittin or Yoshihara? The 2010 and 2011 champion oh. doing battle here, veterans of the sport. And Vaughn comes out swinging on run number two as well. The initiation really gave him a good advantage to, to get some separation from from Dai, who was kind of playing catch up on a, a lot of the bank. Uh, when you when you think about catch up, you're only talking about a, a car length or so, but remember how close Vaughn was on his chase run. And then finally Dai is able to close the door coming off the zone, but by this time Vaughn has really reached deep into outside zones two and three. And then you see an angle mistake there surging forward from Dai Gerald Yoshihara. So, if Vaughn won the battle of the chases, it's going to come down to the leads. And uh, this is an incredible lead run from Vaughn Gittin Jr. Yeah, really, really well done here. Lantane, uh, Lantane, jump in here, bud. That was an incredible lead run from Vaughn. He was high on the wall. He was above that dotted line for the most part. And he was on throttle and very fast. Dai has been keeping up to everybody, mostly on that yeah. bank. And he had a gap established between himself and Vaughn Gittin Jr. because Vaughn is just on throttle. His angle was set. He was looking phenomenal. He filled the zones better than Dai did, I think, in the lead position. And uh, I think it's going to go his way. Yes, it will. There you go. Vaughn Gittin Jr. gets the win and is going to the finals. He's guaranteed a podium. Like you said, uh, you know, wants to get on the box, wants to get in there. Woo! Is uh, his exclamation point there, Ryan. Yeah, it, it, you know, when Vaughn gets on a hot one, it, it is really hard to imagine him <laughs> kind of stopping. This reminds me of that uh, final battle uh, with Osbo. Um, a couple, oh, yeah, a, a, a couple, window, year, a couple, couple years, years ago. ago. Yeah, yeah, that was sick. A couple of years ago, which, you know, with, there's always the possibility that we we may, yeah. we may see that, and we are going to see we that. Are gonna, <laughs> there is a possibility. Guess what, Ryan? You win. Yep. 
Ryan Sage gets the win. So no no coincidence there. It, it seems very reminiscent of that time frame. Remember, that was 2-1 more times. Yeah, that <laughs> so, was bonkers. But now we got to see the third place battle here between uh, these two other two champions yep. and Michael Essa and Daijiro Yoshihara. Yeah, that's that should be a lot of fun here. We'll get some fresh Falcon tire underneath Dai Yoshihara. Michael Essa throwing some fuel in the tank and some fresh Achilles for him. And then, uh, yeah, so it, it should be interesting. We have... Uh, it looks like Osbo and Gittin, and they will be uh, all Nitto Tire, one and two, once again here. And again, Essa and Yoshihara. All right, as we're getting prepared for the third place battle, I throw it down to my homegirl, Lorette Nickel. Lorette. Jared, thank you so much. Frederick is just watching that last battle on his phone. So you're going against Vaughn Gittin Jr. And he was really frustrated with his finish in St. Louis. He's hungry. So how do you protect yourself? Oh boy, how do you protect yourself against JR? Uh, yeah, we had a good battle in St. Louis. Uh, it, was, it was awesome to come out swinging, get that win. And he's on fire here, obviously. Um, we've had a lot of cool battles. and. You know, it brings me back to when I first got into the sport. And JR had some really nice things to say. He's always looking out for the little guys. Uh, but now we're both veterans. It's going to be all out. We're in the finals. Yep. So uh, this is it. This is it. But how do you take that win? It's just trying to do what we have been doing, trying to be consistent, trying to not ma make big mistakes, having, but at the same time, gambling a little bit, giving him, you know, showing him we're there. So that's the plan. Um, we've had some good runs today. We've had some runs that haven't been that good, and now it's just trying to stay in that zone and put it on JR's door. Yeah. And consistency is definitely key, but how is the track for you right now? It's, it seems to kind of stabilize right now. We haven't, I mean, I don't want to jinx us again, but we, we're not seeing rain falling right now. It's kind of dry. It's kind of been the same for the last couple of runs, and now we can really start to kind of dial in the setup. Um, uh, so it's, now it's just every man for himself. Go out there and do what we can. Yeah, and new car for you, so the setup is brand new too. Where's your confidence? It's building. Okay. Um, I, I was struggling in the rain. Usually I like the rain, but today I have been a little bit off. Maybe I stayed in Southern California for too long. Uh, but it's building. Uh, we, we've shown that we can do it, uh, but JR ever. So we're going to try and take this super out there. I mean, we're on the same tire. Uh, first year for us with Nitto, and it's been amazing so far. So, uh, yeah, may the best man win. Any adjustments that you feel like you have to make on the track? Uh, no, miss, I don't think we're making any adjustments right now. Uh, we're talking about tire pressures and stuff. Maybe we're doing something small. But um, we're, we don't want to change too much. When you're in the zone, when you're in the group, when you've gotten to the final, you have a decent setup. But is it going to be enough? I mean, there's only one way to find out. So uh, I think it's, uh, it's go time right now. Frederick, thanks so much. Thank you. Guys. Oh, Thank you, Lorette. Uh, thank you so much, Lorette, and congratulations to Freddie. Guaranteed because uh, the mountains over off in the distance don't have any clouds. So, the, yeah, right there. You can see that is clear. But uh, on either side of us, it is definitely raining. So, look. Look at that. that. That's on the north side. And then on the south side, it is clear as day, which that's the way the wind is blowing. So that's a good thing. So hopefully we can bang out a couple battles here because third place, Oh, uh, sorry, got some in my throat there. I got excited, got a, got a little torque there. Michael Essa versus Dai Yoshihara, two champions, final podium spot. Neither of these guys have been on the box, either at round one or two, so we'd love to see them grab a spot, but it can be only one in our Type S top three battle. Type S, the official lighting of Formula Drift. Michael Essa warming up his Achilles tires. Hopefully he has a, uh, Ryan, you hope he's fixed that power steering issue that he had earlier. Yeah, it seemed like uh, the last battle was an indication that he at least had gotten it under control. But obviously this is a really important battle. Everybody wants to be on the box. This is the final opportunity to do that for these two competitors. And uh, from what we've seen from them today, and look at the noticeable, uh, the very similar kind of uh, aesthetics. aesthetics. Yeah, the white and the blue with <laughs> yeah. the red. It's like, uh, it's like, Boot, it's like a bootleg copycat right there. I don't know who's copying who here, but definitely love it. Here we go. So two very different vehicles. Again, the all BMW Michael Essa in that FCP Euro Liquid Molly BMW chasing down Dai Oshihara on some Falcon tires. Throws it in for third place. Dai Oshihara, like you said, pulling away. Could not do that with Vaughn Gittin Jr., but here he is separating from Essa. But Essa's, I believe, going to catch him here in the power alley. 
Really good line there by Dai Oshihara. Good chase by Michael Essa. Very fluid. These are some of the smoothest drivers here in Formula Drift, Ryan. That's, you know, I, we always talk about, I mean, these guys are some of the smoothest and quickest drivers, man. And this is a really good, really good battle here, matched up and pairing them up. Yeah, and a, and a solid start here for Daijiro Yoshihara, who gets a good jump on Michael Essa. You can see that two to three car gap distance here that's been established on the bank. Now Essa starts to reel him in, gets it down to about a half a car here as they leave the bank, but damage may have been done there. Essa, one more time from the, the big bank, eye in the sky. This is where Essa starts attacking. Dai gets into outside zone two, transitions to outside zone three. There's Essa on the attack, leaving, coming into inside flip number one and then a quick snap back around. Dai just gets right to the edge of outside zone four and Essa follows him through. Switching things up now, Michael Essa going to the lead run, Daijiro Yoshihara going to the chase. We saw Dai at moments in his chase runs, especially on the big bank, really making a strong point of difference for himself against other competitors and utilizing that grip and horsepower that he has. Can he do that here against Michael Essa? All right, so uh, we have Essa, who's going to lead. Who's going to get third place? This place echoing with the exhaust snow and filled with smoke of Michael Essa and Dai Yoshihara. Clouds looming, but we're about to make clouds of our own. Essa throws it on. The Achilles radial throwing up that thick cotton. Here we go. Bold move, Cotton, as Michael Essa throws it in. Dai Yoshihara nosing in, not mimicking the angle. Definitely the proximity, though. Now coming into the power alley, Essa filling all of it. Oh, Dai Yoshihara goes offline. A massive mistake by the champ of Dai Yoshihara. And Ryan popping and locking across the finish line, but unfortunately for Dai Yoshihara, makes that mistake, but Essa's got to be smiling. Looks like he's going to grab third place, Ryan. Well, I thought Dai had the better of the two chase runs on the bank in terms of proximity. But as you said, Michael Essa put up a massive plume of smoke using those Achilles tires through the center section. It looks like Dai just got lost, transitioned too early, and then went off course. He had the proximity, but I didn't, he didn't mimic the angle. Uh, I mean... Uh, well, that view it did look like. <laughs> <laughs> but right, it doesn't really matter because he, as he transitions, he flicks it so hard that he comes back around in a position that he just can't link uh, outside zone three to inside clip one. So I think he's doing a really great job on the bank there. And, and as he, it's actually the mistake starts to pick up even right at the end of outside zone two. So right. something went wrong for Daijiro Yoshihara there. It's basically all four tires off, which would be an incomplete. And he did not give up. He kept the fight in there as any professional driver would do. But uh, that mistake is certainly going to hurt him in the eyes of the judges. Yeah, he made like Rick Astley. Never going to give you up. Never going to let you down, right? He got Rick rolled. But uh, hey, FYI, did you see that other angle with that straight on, not the drone? He definitely did not mimic the angle, so I'm not totally crazy there. Michael Essa gets the win, and he gets third place here at round three of the Formula Drift Pro Championship. Dai Yoshihara just a bit outside, so Achilles tires on the box there in third place. And it's a Nitto one and two between Von Gittin Jr. and Frederick Osbo. Who's going to come out on top? Von Gittin Jr. warming up his Nittos in that Monster Energy Nitto tire. Ford Performance Mustang RTR ready to rock. We got Abby and uh, Gunner watching from home. How we doing, Abby? What's up, Gunner? As, uh, here we are, the Type S. The Type S finals are upon us. The official lighting of Formula Drift. Two champions, one from Norway, one from America. Two different tires, two different energy, or sorry, same tire, different energy drink sponsors, Rockstar and Monster, Toyota and Ford. Who's gonna come out on top? Ryan, any, uh, any any foreshadowing here? Any any kind of looking into your crystal ball? What do you think? What do you expect? I don't really think we got the battle that we wanted in St. Louis, uh, but today's competitor, meaning Vaughn Gittin Jr. and Frederick Osbo here in Seattle at Evergreen Speedway, seems more like what we saw towards the end of um, two years ago at Irwindale Speedway. I would like to see that again. The two yeah. one more times that we saw uh, where Osbo was on the verge of a championship and Von Gittin Jr. took him out. Well, it's, I, I, think, I think it's really going to come down to, to be honest, a driver beating themselves and, and making that major mistake. That's the, the, the way Vaughn has progressed through the day 
like I said, when he talked to Lorette, he seemed a bit frazzled. He was a little frustrated with the vehicles. And, and I mean, he, he trusts his equipment, don't get me wrong, but it seems that now he's just really got it dialed. Freddie and Frederick Osbo, uh, seems cool, calm, collected. Just the, the, the posture there between the between the two drivers. Uh, I, I would say Freddie seems a little bit more calm, but you know what? If Vaughn can harness that energy and then just focus it here on track, he might get the win. Here we go. Vaughn Gittin Jr. will lead. Frederick Osbo will lead Chase. Vaughn Gittin Jr. in the Monster Energy. Ford Mustang throws it in. The Rockstar Energy Drink, Toyota GR Supra, and there it is, focusing that energy, bring it all the way through, locked and loaded. Vaughn with that wide swing into that second outside zone, through the power alley. Goes Vaughn, bigger angle, Osbo does gain the proximity, but look at Vaughn just hooking up and pulling out of that outer zone. Vaughn getting Jr., the best run definitely we've seen from him today, and that is when he needs to get it done, Ryan. I mean, the car looks extremely well set up, and when was the last time you saw any kind of gap being pulled on Frederick Osbo? Let's see how deep Vaughn gets into outside zone one. See, the front wheel is nice and high. No correction. He's a little bit lower than you'd like him to be, so Osbo has an opportunity to make a difference there. He's not all the way up against the wall, but he is still pulling a gap on Osbo, which means Osbo got caught sleeping a little bit, or the setup might need to be adjusted bring a little bit more grip there. Osbo has been door to door with everybody in those sections, those very important sections of the course. Now Osbo's back on it. Both drivers doing a great job here, but Osbo comes up a little bit tight on that final outside zone. So there is a window of opportunity here for Vaughn Gittin Jr. We just saw the chase from Frederick Osbo, slightly uncharacteristic. But now Oswald's got a chance to do what he's been doing all weekend, which is those really solid, clean lead runs to see how Vaughn can adapt. And man, that Vaughn run there was was very impressive. But uh, we know Frederick, you know, I'm really surprised Frederick wasn't closer to, uh, we, Lantane and I are, are over here chatting. And, and I mean, what is expected of these drivers is very impressive and they do deliver. So this is exactly, you know, just a, a testament to the talent, the, the, the builds of the teams and, and just overall the equipment, the, the aftermarket, just overall just formula drift and the progression of it is very impressive. So I, I'm definitely, you know, me personally, I'm, I'm proud to be part of this this form of your family and just the overall cars are insane, Ryan. Ryan, you don't you don't agree? No, no. I was just I was hearing something come over the comms. <laughs> I think they were uh, they were going to, uh, to take another yeah. look at what's happening here on course as we go and pick a few things up. This is what you were talking about, though, right? Is yeah. we have not really seen anything like this now in a, in a normal battle. You would say that's a pretty decent chase, but from what we've come to expect from Frederick Osbo. It's slightly out of character. Now, Vaughn doesn't get all the way to completely to outside zone uh, three, but he is laying down a solid, clean lead run and oh, leaving all open opportunities for Osbo to chase and close the door. But Osbo didn't really do it in the way that we typically see it. All right, so a little bit of track debris there. We cleaned up. Frederick Osbo's getting the clean air out the nose of that brand new Toyota GR Supra. Spray away there, Vaughn Gittin Jr. You're going to need all that nitrous here to hang with Freddie. The Rockstar Energy Drink, Toyota, GR Supra. Both these guys on Nitto Tires. Nitto Tires guaranteed to get the win. Frederick Osbo throw, oh, and a tap of the wall there by Freddie. First time I've seen him tap the wall of that Supra. And now coming down into the power alley. Let's see how they transition. Vaughn Gittin Jr. jumps to the side of him. Good proximity there. Let's see how the transition goes down in this final outer zone. Both Freddie and Vaughn get Jr. And one more jump, or are we going <laughs> to see him go again? Ryan, what, what warrants the chuckles? Just an awesome battle? Well, yeah, I mean, that was awesome. You that know, was what, sick. What was surprising to me, and we probably won't see this on the replay, but Vaughn was not really anxious to get out of the gate, and that tells me that he thinks his car has got a little bit more speed than Osbo's. Now, he wasn't completely door-to-door -door on the bank, but he kept the proximity pretty tight here. Osbo, great job on outside zones two and three, but Vaughn matching that angle, closing the door on inside flip number one. Good flick back around from Osbo, but here comes Vaughn, follows him deep into outside zone four, which Osbo did not do. That was really, really good. How, I mean, watch Osbo tap it. You see the trunk get affected I think there. Vaughn may have tapped Both it too. Of, yeah, look. I mean, uh, talk about chasing. You know, hey, you tap? All right, I'll tap too. Like little toe tap, little clip, clip snap as we bring it into that power alley. Really well done. Look at maxing out that angle as Freddie, like you said, 
Freddie did get out to that third outside zone, but watch Von Gitt Jr. just massage the back end of that Mustang there. That was really well done, and you didn't see a lot of handbrake in order to do that. So that side bite really got him there, and those Nitto tires hooked up to uh, just just get him where he needed to be. Ryan, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Let's check out the uh, BC Racing side-by-side -side instant replay here. Do you guys think we have a winner? What's going on in the chat? Let us know. Who do you think won? Is it Von Gittin Jr. or Frederick Osbo? As we're waiting for the side-by-side -side there, Matt Sopa on the Ropa, keeping it clean down there. Remember, tomorrow, tune in, round four, the Formula Drift Pro Championship. After this, we'll be giving away the trophies down on the podium. Michael Essa grabbing third spot. Here's our BC Racing side-by-side -side instant replay. So let's take a look at Osbo up on the right. Lead runs. In terms of depthness to the wall or proximity to the wall, seem pretty similar. Vaughn on outside zones two and three. Pretty good there in his lead run. Proximity a little bit more apparent there from Vaughn on the last section of the course going into outside zone four. And man, they are going so fast. It's actually hard to move your eyes backwards, right. back and forth. I just want, I let one eye go lazy and I just look at that right. And then this is kind of do that. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, Dual it's, processing. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, if we do have a winner, you know that we will bring all three cars down in front of the empty grandstands and uh, pr <laughs> produce. Not empty. We got some, we got friends and family and some staff. But we got, yeah, we got 60 people here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But everybody's watching online and uh, waiting for them to input their scores and the verdict. Do you guys think we have a winner? Or are we going one more time? Oh, and we have a winner. We have a winner. We'll bring them here in front of the grandstands. We'll bring our three drivers. Pretty insane driving. What the Farouk, we'll see you tomorrow here at round four. Seen a lot of these drivers hanging out, watching, spectating, and cheering on their friends or their enemies. Amy Bakshis, Odie's wife and spotter, cheering them on. Got the Hughes, mom and dad. Dayton do a backflip. And it is not unanimous, is what we are hearing. Not unanimous. We are bringing those two vehicles. It ended up being a dry day here. Larry Chen grabbing the shots as we bring these two former champions out here on track. Some celebratory donut, donuts from these two gentlemen. Congratulations to these two drivers, these two former champs, and it's an all-former champ podium. All right, we'll bring him up. And again, make some noise for him. Third place here at round three. Third place at round three of the Formula Drift Pro Championship. Piloting the FCP Euro, Liquid Molly, BMW on Achilles tires. Make some noise for Michael Essa. All right, and now your winner here at round three of the Formula Drift Pro Championship. Make some noise for both drivers as they step outside of their vehicle. Make some noise for Vaughn Gain Jr. and Frederick Osbo. All right, your winner here. Overall, again, a former champ. Your winner on Nitto Tires. Sponsored by an energy drink company. And they're here in the building. Your winner here at round three of the Formula Drift Championship. It was not unanimous. One of the judges went one more time. And the other two chose, as we slide them over, you'll see anytime. One more time from Chris Yule. Ryan Lontaine says Vaughn Ginn Jr. And the winner of round three is Vaughn Ginn Jr. gets the win. Here at round three of the Formula Drift Pro Championship, Vaughn Ginn Jr. gets the win. That means second place goes to the Rockstar Energy Drink Toyota Racing GR Supra. 
of Frederick, the Norwegian Hammer Osbo. Second place for Frederick Osbo here at round three of the FD Championship. Lorette Nickel, I'm throwing it down to you. What does Vaughn Gittin Jr. have to say other than, woo? <laughs> well, Vaughn told us that he was super frustrated with his results in St. Louis. Vaughn, it feels like this was really redemptive and a really emotional moment for you right now. What, what are you processing? <laughs> I just miss my family. I've been on the road for 10 days, running hard. I miss uh, my wife, I miss my boy. And I'm just so grateful for this team. We show up today, we made some mistakes early on. We reset in the middle of the day and uh, made it happen. And um, I'm just, uh, I'm elated right now. I'm just uh, really proud. It's been a rough couple of years, you know. Uh, we haven't gotten the results that we've worked for and we put our heads down and uh, got to work on the off season and um, uh, made some changes. And uh, the team is pushing me out of my comfort zone uh, the last couple years, and um, I'm, I'm getting back to, to where, I know, uh, where I know I should be and uh, obviously where I am. So uh, I'm just extremely grateful. You know, it was a, a rough year. I'm, I'm uh, missing all the fans that are usually here screaming for us, the families that we've watched, you know, grow, uh, grow old here, you know. So uh, just a lot, of, uh, a lot of good positive thoughts right now, and I'm just pumped and grateful for all you watching at home and supporting us. Uh, through this wild year and um, uh, what a run. I mean, it was, uh, yeah, that thing doesn't have too much more in it. And we, were, we, we, we went for it. So, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just pumped. Good. I'm so glad for you and I'm so happy for you. And, you know, today the weather has been so inconsistent and the temperatures are dropping. It's getting quite cold. And on such a treacherous track, how did you stay clean out here? Yeah, it was, um, it was tough. Like, this was seriously one of the toughest events I've ever run in. And I think you talk to any driver, they'll agree. There's nothing consistent about it. So you're learning as you go. Um, really grateful to have, um, really grateful to have, you know, another teammate, Chelsea, who's been just an incredible addition to our team. And, uh, you know, we're just, you know, in Seattle, I'm looking out for him. He's looking out for me. And we're just, you know, vibing off each other and, and learning. So that, that is a huge ticket. To, to something like this where it's wet and dry and patchy. The other thing is patience. You know, um, this track was only came to us the last two, three rounds and you had to just be patient in the wet spots or else you were just gonna take yourself out. So for me, it was just uh, focus and uh, just staying where I needed to be here. Um, that's cause I, you know, that's the only thing that can take us out uh, is, is at least my personal feeling and um, oh, it feels good. good. I miss you, Abby and Gunnar, I love you guys. All right, congratulations to Vaughn Gittin Jr., your winner of round three. Jared. Thank you so much, Lorette. Congratulations, Vaughn Gittin Jr., Frederick Osbo, Michael Esso. We'll give out the trophies off camera, but an amazing day. Remember, we do it all again tomorrow. Ryan, your thoughts here at round three. Yeah, strong performances today from Vaughn Gittin Jr. That was definitely a throwback to seasons in the past and what we saw in the rivalry that had developed over the years between him and Frederick Osbo. It's a brand new day tomorrow. All new drivers, excuse me, all new cars coming back, getting a refresher overnight. And it's not going to be a couple weeks. It's going to be less than 24 hours. Yep. So we saw some carnage. We saw a little bit of rain. But now the championship chase is being thrown in the mix here as drivers have shaken things up. We saw top guys go out early. And tomorrow we will close it out here at Evergreen Speedway. That's right. So, again, we'll see you guys tomorrow for round four of the Formula Jet Pro Championship. Some exciting, ex awesome highlights. We'll be back here again on behalf of the whole Formula Drift staff, the judges, Ryan Sage and Lorette Nickel. I'm Jared Deanna. We'll see you online. We'll see you another time. Send it, Formula Drift.